Hello? What's up? Listen, we're going live. No guests today. You picked a topic. Throw me some stuff in chat. How's it going? How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. We have a live stream today, Q&A, live session. It's been a while since I did one of these. And, uh, you know, I was waiting on a guest and didn't hear back from my guest. Um, so it's like, you know what, whether, you know, just push that live button, go live, have nothing on my heart to talk about right now. Maybe if you guys throw some some words out there, almost like freestyling some questions, then maybe it'll... Uh, trigger some things with within me that I can talk about. So this is what we're doing. I love these episodes and uh, just pushing that live button. And uh, so, yeah, if you have anything you want to talk about, share it out in chat. I've got the chat pulled up here. No matter where you're listening to this, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, doesn't matter where you are, I'll get the um, notification. So whatever you guys want to talk about, throw the topic, ask the question, and we'll do it. We'll make it happen. I want to say a huge thank you to all the Patreon supporters. Uh, this is not possible without your uh, financial support. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Every uh, person, every every cent that is uh, donated to to this ministry and to what we're, we're we're building here with the podcast and the music and the meditations and the book and all of that stuff. It's going forth and uh, and it's powerful and it's effective and I want to say a huge thank you for enabling me to be able to do this I'm I don't take it lightly I am very uh grateful I protect the platform and um I'm just in in awe and in wonder that you guys believe in what I'm doing as well so if you want to support head on over to patreon patreon.com backslash truth seeker there you get access to my entire discography of music you get access to Thursday night school of the mystics a um, bunch of really cool stuff, and uh, you get access to that for a dollar, no matter what you're able to do. I'm give a shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Some new people here. Shout out to Pamela Spears. Pamela, I skipped your, <laughs> skipped the the first part because I don't know how to pronounce it. I I suck at I butchered last names. I'm sorry. Pamela Simeonaro. Spears, thank you for the support. Uh, Zachary Roth, what's up, Zachary, man? You just joined Discord as well, brother. Shout out to you. Connect with me on there. There's a call feature. You can call me on Discord. So uh, say what's up there. I love to chat with you, man. Um, shout out to Stephanie, just Stephanie. And uh, that's about it. Within the last week or so, welcome. Christopher Horton, Chris Floyd, Ida Crowder, bunch of new people, man. New faces, new people. Um, there's something weird when it comes to like Patreon and having a uh, Discord community. And we, so we have our people who are like our daily people. And it's like kind of the, the close circle, close knit people. You kind of pick who you are. I don't I don't really pick you pick who you are. You just show up. You resonate with the work. Um, you know, you you post things in, in the Discord and uh, commentary and you add to the conversation, right? There's those people. There's those people who, when we go live, your name's going to pop up in the chat. My day one people, um, 
you know, I don't pick those people. I don't. You guys show up. So it's open game. Whoever hangs out and whoever's part of the community, man. And so I try to be there for for everyone, especially for the ones who hang out. So shout out to all of you guys. You know who you are. You're already comment in the in the chat. So shout out to you. But uh it's it's a blessing to 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 be able to meet uh you guys and uh for the, you know, doing some of the retreats and things like that we've been doing and doing some of the um uh, conferences and Gothic Mystic and Chris Garner and Christy Folks and Danny and and uh, just so many of the people that I've been able to to meet in person. The internet is beautiful. We're all over it. And he sent some hearts right when I said his name. Uh, it's been awesome to meet you guys in person. And uh, because the internet's cool, like we're connected all over the world. Literally, we have people all over the world uh, who are part of this community. But it's it does so much for our spirits, I think, to uh, to meet in person. And uh, you guys who have drove like like <laughs> countless hours, you can count them. It's about 13 hours that Danny drove to come down here. Uh, anytime we host an event, Joshua Fluman drives down. It's an average of eight hours for him. I mean, it's just my mind is blown. Just the community and people showing up and, and – um, resonating with the work. I don't think it has anything to do with me. You guys know that. Um, but it's a community of, of like-minded people. And it's been beautiful to meet the day one people, to meet the people for the first time who, I mean, we, we almost talk daily, right, with, with some of these people I've, I've mentioned. You guys have my ear, right? Um, but then when we host an event, there's other people who don't comment every day. Like they don't show up on the live streams. They're working. They may listen to the, on the podcasting apps. The majority of the numbers are on the podcasting apps. And I don't hear from you unless it's an email, unless it's uh, a message on Facebook or Twitter or something. Unless you reach out, I don't I really don't know that you're listening. It's just a number. Right. So there's those people, too. So the cool thing is meeting those people, you know, when we uh, um to host an event or we have a men's retreat or whatever. And then all these people book seats and they're like, yeah, I've been listening for years. And I was like, hi, I just like my first time meeting you. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and that's cool too. So there's different spectrums of, of people who are engaging. And I mean, even those people who are listening to the podcast every day and I don't even know who they are. So I guess with that being said, send me an email, send me a message, say hello, you know, whoever you are out there and I, and I'll respond. You know, I'm not un unreachable. Uh, it may not be a, a long paragraph, but I'll at least say what's up. So it's it's really cool just the uh, how eclectic our, our community is and the different people who are uh, resonating with the work, you know, and uh, it's awesome. So Flying Penguins, Martin says, I can't wait to meet you in person one day. We mentioned you last night, Martin, because um, my, I have a friend that I was just interviewed on her podcast last night, The Authentic Deb, and that podcast will be up shortly and I'll share it out with everybody but um she's in Houston and um you know so she's uh in the community too and and uh knows that you guys are are, are close and wants to maybe set up and, and do something she has been talking about bringing me over to Houston and setting up some type of event and not knowing what that would look like and uh but you guys are I think are close so if y'all want to set something up um, she was under the impression that a lot of what you do with the flying penguins is like only men. I know you really do focus on a, a lot of stuff with the men and, and young adults and stuff like that, but, uh, definitely hook up with me, hook up with her, man. So I'd love to come out to Houston to make that happen. And, uh, that's one thing I want to do is really get out there and, and see people more, you know, um, my good friend, Justin Taylor, AKA Grimm and Tiffany, like, uh, I, I had the chance to, um, the opportunity to marry them and officiate their, their wedding here at the beginning of, of the year in January. And, uh, they f flew me out and, uh, to Denver and this guy, he's you talking about Patreon. Like he was one of the first patrons, like really when we had three patrons, he was one of them and, uh, and just met him online, you know, and he's been listening to my music and, um, we've become really good friends and being able to finally meet him and, you know, hug their necks, man. It's just, it just, it's awesome. Y'all. I really, I dig it so much. So um, I'm going to uh, go through the comment section here. Like I said, whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm I'm up to talk about it. So, you know, this is interesting because like, um, 
it, it already got a bunch of topics <laughs> and I want to talk about them all. So Ethan says, uh, how do you deal with people insisting that you discuss politics and religion? Man, it's hard, even for me. I got a, an interview and it, this interview was pre-recorded, but it was with Kingdom Talks and Gil Hodges, who I love dearly. But we were on I was on his show and it's going to air Wednesday night. Um, but we talked a lot about Trump. <laughs> it's just so polarizing. And uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, Christian audience who really, be, you know, believe that God has ordained Trump, that God is using Trump. And I mean, there's just so many different levels of, you know, people who support Trump. Um, I'm not I'm not a political guy like, uh, you know, I have a few opinions here and there, but sometimes they come out. I don't want them to like I, I, I know that I should just keep them to myself because because I know the agenda. And I know that politics and Trump and his tweeting and all of that stuff is polarizing for a reason. He's given us something to talk about. They're giving us dinner and a circus. And even though I'm consciously don't 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 respond, don't say it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I find myself doing it anyway. And I have to, like, continually check myself because they're doing a really good job of getting everybody in it you have you have to have an opinion if you don't have an opinion like what are you like what are you doing whether you love trump whether you hate trump or whatever like just this this stuff is scripted by some really 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 good writers who know how to get the world involved in what's going on so um how do you deal with people insisting that that you discuss politics it's got us consumed even for people like me and not just me, many others who don't want to talk about it because I don't want to like rain on the parade of people who really believe that, you know, Trump is God is using Trump for such an hour as this to get us on the right path. Like people, it's your choice to believe that, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to rain on that parade. So I try not to and find myself talking about it anyway, like the Apostle Paul, you know, the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing because I know it's polarizing. They tell you don't talk about religion and politics at the bar. Why? Because they're both polarizing. We're already talking about religion, you know. So, you know what I'm saying? We're already talking about religion. So, the politics on top of that is just like a double whammy. So, I try not to. So, how do you deal with people? I really, you know, the, the best way to do it is just to ghost it. To ghost it. And and not even, not even like give it the time of day. <clears throat> I got a friend, a close friend who calls me like every morning and the first thing out of his mouth is Trump. Oh man, I can't believe what Nancy Pelosi did and Trump is ever like, bro, why are you calling me at like seven in the morning wanting to talk about Trump? I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to start my day off on that note. Call me and talk about something else, bro. Don't call me talking about Trump and what the politics and what we need to do and how we going to rally and man, no. It, it bad vibes you know bad energy and so it's a circus for a reason it's a war for a reason but it, you know they're all all on the same team these people are really close friends so don't get caught up man shout out to gavin mcdonald man finally becoming a patron he's been telling me for years he's like bro i'm gonna sign up i'm gonna be a patron and uh he finally did it man thank you so much uh for believing in the work and uh and just being there regardless sharing out my work whether you are able to be a patron or not. So thank you for, for coming on. But yeah, the, the, the political arena where it's ramping up, the energy is weird. Um, and it's, it's, it'll pull you in, brace yourself and do what you can to not talk about it. Cause it'll make it to where you can't, you can't not talk about it. And that's not good. They're doing a good job. That's mind control, man. They're controlling the narrative. This is, it's not spur of the, I don't think that these tweets are spur of the moment. I think that this stuff is playing, man, by some really smart people or really smart beings. Oh, Lord Jesus, did we really go there? Yeah, I digress. Uh, Baba says, what about the inner child? Did your guest bounce? Yeah, so I called him and um, um, emailed him and I didn't get a response. And that's why we're a few minutes late going live. I tried to give him a chance to join. But yeah, I mean, that's a, just a deep topic talking about we were supposed to talk about. I'm sure we'll we'll rebook it. But how the inner child affects your sexual appetite as far as talking about dealing with pornography addiction and instant gratification. 
you know, and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll probably, uh, that's what I say, I'm sure and probably in the same breath, right? I'm sure probably we will. My wife gets on to me for that. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> rebook it. I'm sure we will. Um, but that, that was an interview that was booked like three, four months ago. And so when it's booked that far uh, <laughs> in advance, people forget about it. The good thing about when I book with them, it, they get follow up emails and, you know, um, it'll email them and tell them, you know, you got a show coming up today or whatever the case is. So I don't know. Maybe he has something come up. But no, that's a that's a great topic. And uh, the inner child and being stuck at a certain age where trauma is and instant gratification. And so I'm sure we'll do that again. Shout out to Chris Garner. What's up? Uh, Chris Garner says, yo, Fluman, enjoyed watching you and Kenny this morning. Yeah, I caught a little bit of that. So shout out to uh, Gothic Mystic having uh, Kenny, uh, which is Allie's husband, Kenny and Allie, on and talking about the Book of Enoch. Let's see. Going through here. These comments. Uh, Danny has the running record amongst us so far. I don't know. I think uh, Danny has the uh, the uh, record about, you know, miles traveled. But I think you, Josh Gothic Mystic, uh, combined. I don't know. It's it's a. I think it's either you or Christy, but probably you, because y'all are both driving <laughs> far to get here when we do something. Um, let's see. Go through here. Let me know these questions. Anybody has questions? Let me know. I'm. I know I'm a little bit behind, but I'm scrolling through here, trying not to give too much um, dead air when I'm reading these questions. Have a take on solar symbolism in the Christian church logos. Yeah, that's interesting. So there's a couple of them. Uh, it's like once you do the research, you know, to to like, you know what I'm saying, the lay person, they have no idea what these symbols mean. I know there was a big church here in Mobile, and they have the cross with the circle going around the middle of it, like in the middle of the, the T. It's the solar cross. It's the zodiac. Right. And uh, so these symbols are very powerful and, and they're very ancient. And so to just find one and just throw it up there, it makes you wonder sometimes because, you know, with the conspiracy stuff, people are like, you know, do they know what this symbol really means or this is an occultic symbol or something like that? And there's a bunch of them that Christians use and they don't even know it. Um, there's a, another church around here that's called Cross and Crown Church. And the symbol is a sideways cross. Uh, going through a crown and so it's hey king jesus you know king of the king of the world um but the cross and crown is is a is a uh, masonic rosicrucian symbol and it's a very ancient symbol as well the cross going through the crown um you know and they don't know that I, it's shout out to something too like my buddy mars from uh used to rap with insane clown posse he's a christian now but he he would email me and i, I worked on some some logos and shirt designs for him and um he uh, had me to do this one and then he he wanted me to do the cross and crown logo and maybe I shouldn't have said something I don't know he paid me to do it I did the cross and crown but like after I did the logo for the shirt I said hey you do know that's a that's a masonic symbol right I'm not trying to convict you I'm not trying to you know I'm just you do the knowledge you you really given over to research I was like you know just look it up and he's like yeah let's take it off let's take that I don't want that on there no more but it's like you know symbolism um is ancient I don't think there's anything that we can draw and create that hasn't already been done. There's nothing new under the sun. So to try to be, you know, even my symbol, you know, it's it definitely, on, you know, on purpose, the T and the S coming together looks like the caduceus. You know, when you bring them together and I've had other renditions of my logo, um, but for good reason. I, I like the caduceus. I have it tattooed on me and um, uh, ascension and the energy rising uh, to symbolize um ascension and enlightenment i really like the caduceus logo a symbol but for for different people these symbols mean different things there's another church here in mobile these are just ones in mobile they have the um a triangle with a circle in the middle of it and it looks like two roads going into the horizon and it's the sun so it's a a pyramid that looks like the all-seeing eye that's illuminated around it for the sun I mean, come on, the dawning of a new day. Just look at that symbolism. I believe that uh, Jordan Maxwell even put out a documentary called The Dawn of a New Day. And that term in general is a 
so-called new world order term, the dawning of a new day that they're trying to bring about with the, the new world order and all of this symbolism with the pyramids and um, the all seeing eye and things like that. But I don't think it's wicked, but I think they're using these symbols and they don't know. I remember taking a picture of it and posting it on Facebook and it was like, I don't know if you guys know about this, but this symbol here and here's what it, it's a very powerful symbol. And people got mad at me, uh, people who went to that church, you know, but because to them, it means something else. It doesn't mean the dawn. They have no idea any of that stuff even exists. The signs and symbols, uh, you have to do the knowledge and do the research and a lot of it's secret code. But I wonder the one, the pe people who designed it or even the pastor, if they knew, you know, because uh, you see a lot of, of pyramids, you see a lot of triangles and those those symbols have power. They generate energy and they uh, communicate a thought just by seeing it, like even the colors that are chosen with it, uh, color psychology and seeing like you don't want to have a red logo or red. Uh, red is stop, you know, red, you know, it just communicates a green is OK. This is pleasing. This is good. And so it's so funny when designing stuff and these things come to your mind um, that, you know, Freud that has a lot of stuff about this, about how we symbols communicate with us and and um there's a lot of of powerful people i mean red and blue the whole democrat and republican thing red and blue we got the bloods and crips you know these two colors that are, are, are at war uh throughout the centuries with with one another you know the red blood versus the blue blood illuminati you know what i'm saying like that's a thing too um, the red versus the blue. And so now we have the Democrats versus the Republicans and the police police uh, sirens are red and blue, just color, color symbolism. And, and it goes really deep. It's not it's not just random. Right. A lot of effort goes into these symbols and logos. Rightfully so. I mean, looking at like, you know, the names of all the the, the, the car car dealerships and the, the car manufacturers they are all named after constellations and different weird stars that we've never heard of. And why are they so successful? Like because they've kind of like paying homage to some of these guys. It makes you wonder. But, you know, what I'm saying Subaru, Mitsubishi, like Nissan, like all of these. I mean, there's so much there's so many of them. Nissan is, is a month, but it goes back to the stars as well uh, in Hebrew. But. All of these things that you don't know, you just think they're made up. Nothing's new. There's nothing new under the sun. So that's why everything goes back to paganism because the pagans were here first. Like they created stuff. We mimicked it. The, the Hebrews mimicked it. The church mimics it. We stole pretty much the majority of Christianity from the pagans. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very deep, deep subject indeed, Jordan Maxwell. Um. So let's see, going through these comments. I'm reading what y'all was saying. Chris Garner says he's close to Houston. He could make it for sure. Let's set it up, man. Let's do the Houston thing. Get me a plane. I, I, I had fun flying for the first time, overcoming my fear, and now I'm ready to fly. Uh, Glee Lizette says, can Satan use Christians too like prophetic ones in dreams? Like, is there an effect religious spirit can do to one's dreams and visions and revelations from God of that sort? That's huge. Um, everything works off of consciousness. Everything works off of the psyche. Um, people represent different things to you in your dreams. And, and Joshua Fluman has a lot of stuff about this. I, you guys definitely go check out his website, thegothicmystic.com. But he uh, has a lot of stuff about dream symbolism. Um, the mother showing up in the dream, right? So if you have a dream and, and your mother's in your dream, the in the dream, the mother could represent the Holy Spirit, which is the feminine aspect of God, the nurturer, you know, um, because she represents something to you. Um, I, I think that Jesus called Peter Satan. Was he really Satan? No, but he was being used of Satan at that moment. These people represent different things to different people. I, I found that in, in my own life of when people would mention my name, it's, it's polarizing as well. Like, I mean, this is not even me. Let's just go back to the Trump thing. For some, when you mention Trump, people get mad. Some people think Trump is a racist. Some people think Trump is a bigot. Um, some people think Trump is in the Ku Klux Klan. I don't think that any of these are true. I'll just say that. Right. But then there's other people. When you mention Trump, they get happy. He's the savior. He's coming to make it right. 
So it's the same figure, but he represents different things to different people. So that person who has that dream and Trump is in your dream, that it could mean the savior. Like they're in, to some people's psyche, I know it sounds crazy, but Trump could, could symbolize the Messiah for some people. Because that's, that's the type of pedestal he's on. He's coming to make all things new. He's coming to make things right. He's coming to straighten the, you know, he's like a John the Baptist even for some people, you know. Um, so with the dreams, just because you have a dream or, or somebody is, shows up, it's what it represents to you. I did an amazing, one of my favorite episodes was with a woman named Lainey Dolphin. And it's about dream symbolism. And, uh, and, and I had my mind blown the whole time. But just talking about how, again, in, in dreams, it's, it, it works off of your psyche and uh, fears. What scares you? Because in your dream, something that scares you might not scare me. Because it, it's dealing with the frame of reference. For me, I was scared of monsters, gremlins, ghoulies, critters, all of these kind of movies that I watched. Freddy Krueger, Jason. And I was tormented when fear came to me in my dream state. It showed up as these monsters. And I had to fight them. I had to run from them. You know, all of these kind of things. So, But for people who haven't watched those movies... Fear showing up in their dream may be falling off of their bicycle. The, the fear of falling, on, and it might zoom in, it might slow down, it might play in slow motion. But fear in their dream, symbolism, could be just simply falling off the bike. I think that's a lot less scary than the monsters having to deal with them. But you see how it works off of your psyche. Um, Michael uh, wants to know about how the government is, is messing with the weed industry. Oh, they're going to get their hands on all this stuff. I mean, the, I don't smoke weed, but the majority of what people tell you is like, hey, this isn't the same thing. Like even going to the dispensaries, like this stuff is not the same thing. This is not. I mean, even, you know, I've t had a couple of these, these guests on recently uh, who were talking about the spirits behind the plants and how it's being manipulated almost. He's performing autopsies on this and taking and, and making a whole new thing and, and like a synthetic and calling it the real deal. So what's de what's happening with that is uh, you got to be careful because they're def the government's definitely is has found a way to monetize it and uh, and make make good money off of it and they're getting their taxes and all that stuff. So they're definitely, you know, I know we've always heard that you know marijuana wasn't even addictive, but I think that you're probably going to be seeing things put in there. Now that's going to make make it uh, a little bit different. Your body may crave it, you know. Um, let's see. Let's go to um, going through some of these comments here. Stephen Kirkland. Uh, shout out to you, brother. Man, I wish you was here. We're playing so much basketball, man. God, I miss you, bro. Uh, do you believe that people can have the gift of constant premonitions? I'm asking in my own experiences for sure. For sure, constant. I mean, I do. I mean, I talk about that stuff all throughout my music and um, picking up on energies. And some people um, are really sensitive to it. Almost so. Like if you don't, if you don't put a cap on it, if you don't learn it, it'll drive you mad. You have to learn it. That's why I think this podcast is so important. My book and my music. It helps people kind of come to uh, terms and grips with some of the psychic abilities, if you will. Right, dealing with the psyche and the abilities of your psyche is to be able to see in the spirit. To be able, the Bible would say, to be able to discern spirits. Um, being able to tell and sense what's going on around. And when, when we say that, the spirits could be uh, something that the person is doing. Right. Somebody who is involved in some things and you're picking up on it and you may have dreams about it. It may come to you in a dream state. It may come to you just through your imagination is really how it, God works with this through the, the pineal gland and working with our imagination, being able to feel stuff. You get around someone and you feel heaviness. You feel scared. Why am I scared around this person? Why am why am I around this this uh, this other person? And I just feel love. You know, we always look at the negative, but let's look at the positive, too. This person is like, I remember when I first became a believer and hanging around Christians who like really spent hours in prayer and they spent a lot of time with Jesus. And uh, and I just man, I just their their aura was just so beautiful. And I wanted to hang around them because they reminded me of Jesus. They reminded me of love. And I still love to be around those people. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, 
So yeah, you can definitely uh, sense what a person's doing in in the spirit realm, but definitely finding out how to control it because it can drive you mad. You know, people going to Walmart, you just hearing things and feeling things. So definitely look into it, you know, because like I said, it'll drive you mad. Uh, the World Guardian Christian says, same goes for Andrew Yang, promising a thousand dollar monthly. He said he's not a politician, but an entrepreneur <laughs> running for POTUS. I like Yang. I like Yang. Yang Gang. You know, um, it's a sad day. Cameron says it's a sad day when most God's people can do is protest. Man, look, and I'm I'm crediting Calvin Witcher for this because I heard him say it first, but I mentioned it on a couple podcasts this last week on some interviews some people had me on, but um, you said God's people, the most they can do is protest. What is our, what is our stream or strain, if you will, of Christianity called Protestant. It was form formed after protesting. That's how we got here. Protesting. We're not going to do it this way. And why? And so the same spirit behind it, is a spirit of protest. We're always f- pointing out what we're against and never what we're we're for. We're protesting, you know, and uh, and we have to be consciously aware of that and stop it, you know. And Christians are known for what they're against. Most people, even you, don't even know what they're for. You just know what they're against. And so, for me, in that whole thing, I really feel like God spoke to me some years ago of uh, looking into a lot of stuff that was going on in the church realm and them teaching false doctrine and and things like that. And I, I, I begin to be known for that because I would just call them out. I would do videos. I would do songs. Like I had a bunch of songs where I would just go in on false doctrine and tithing when I was doing Christian hip hop. And, uh, and I, be- I began to be known for that, the one who was calling those people out, the one who was against all this stuff. And it's like, that's how people knew me, that I was against this, this, this. You didn't know what I was for, but you knew what I was against. And so I really felt like God spoke to me and said, look, if you want to combat false doctrine, if you want to combat false teaching, don't call these people's names out because now you're making it personal. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You're making it personal. And but if you want to combat it, teach it the right way. If you want to combat the false doctrines and the legalism and the things that are behind tithing, teach the right way to tithe. Teach the truth about it. Don't call names. Don't point fingers. Just simply teach it the right way. And so that was a huge revelation for me. It should be a no, no brainer. But us as Protestant Christians, right, we're protesting. The word Protestant comes from protest. Martin Luther protesting. We're not going to do it anymore, you know. Ethan says, thank you for that bit of gu- bit of guidance. No problem, man. Let's see. And, and this is the, the probably why I try not to speak on this stuff. Anyway, Chris Garner says, but really, our political opinions have zero effect anyway. Exactly. Like, what are we what are we doing? Because I rant about what I feel about Trump or about the government or about any anything, the gays, whatever you're against. Like, what what are you? Uh, what 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 did what, you do? What what does that have to do with the price of rice in China? Nothing. You didn't do anything. You told people how you felt. I remember even on Facebook when Trump was running and I would share some of these memes. I still share them. I think some of them are funny. I think laughter is a medicine. We got to be able to laugh at this stuff because if we don't, it's going to drive us crazy. So I remember sharing out memes about Trump and then memes about Hillary. I'm And then I remember going to out to eat and this lady was there a friend who followed me on facebook she's like you're for trump and you're for hillary right just off of some of the things we were sharing i was like no i'm not for any of these people like you know what i'm saying and i guess because i was sharing it she thought that i was for it or something or whatever i mean i feel like if you listen to any of these people long enough and you put yourself in their shoes and things i think that any of them can win you over I think if you listen to some of their good points with an open mind, I think any of them can win you over. Repetition reduces resistance, you know. So I really I really believe that I can listen to probably Yang or AOC, even Trump. Like I sympathize with with the Trump people. I know why they like Trump. Part of me, like I love Trump on The Apprentice, you know, and, and honestly, I probably love Trump anyway, you know, still. But I just don't like 
the people groups who have who have like put him on a pedestal. I don't like how the Christians are trying to like, you know, like equaling this dude to Jesus. I don't like how the racists are saying, yeah, he's our guy. There's a um, and I don't want to offend anybody with this. Even with this, me talking about it is already splitting the waters. There's a I've heard people say that not every Trump supporter is a racist. But every racist is a Trump supporter. And it's like these people have have found someone who fits their agenda. I don't think that Trump is racist. Again, I don't. Um, but for some reason, racists have kind of like taken his image and the hats and, you know, the whole white pride thing. And what is it? The um, I mean, all, all of those. It's, it's crazy, man. <laughs> I don't want you want to talk about it. You know, but I know it gets numbers. I know you have to take because to get numbers, you got to take a hard left or a hard right. You can't walk the, the you know, what I'm saying the middle passage. You can't walk the narrow path and expect numbers to show up. You can't expect it. But, you know, the truth is here a little there a little. It's a it's somewhere in the middle. People, y'all know that. Come on and just decide what the political party just because, you know, they're for or against abortion. That's what about the other stuff? How are you for abortion? Or, or you're against abortion, but you're for war when we're attacking other people and killing their kids. Just don't kill American. Come on, man. I, y'all going to get me started and I'm going to lose all these subscribers. You know, that's what politics do. I'm passionate about this stuff, but I try to choose not to speak on it. But I've been doing it a lot lately because I'm falling victim to to this programming. They got me, y'all. They got me. I'm trying not to. Y'all help me, man. Y'all quit asking these damn questions. <laughs> Come on, man. And they got y'all too. And you know it. Some of you don't know it. That's the scary part. Because you don't know it. I can at least say, yeah, they got me, man. They pulling me in. I can't help it. I delete posts. I, you know, I posted and, you know, I got a lot of a lot of Trump supporters, man, who, who love what I do. A lot of Democrats. Got a lot of gays. I got a little bit of everything, man who they resonate with the works. So I don't want to marginalize anybody. I don't want to marginalize Trump supporters. I don't want to mar- marginalize Democrats. I'm not in that arena. I'm not voting. I'm sorry. You know? And I know by even saying that an analytical mind, Oh, you're not voting. You're the problem. That's what people say. Change the subject. Let me go through these comments. Getting bad energy up in here. <laughs> Uh, Danny says, Jesus said in Luke and Matthew that the Gentile governments are benefactors and exercise their power and authority over people. He told his disciples that they are not to be among that type of shenanigans. For sure. Yeah, yeah. They, that's they, that's they, uh, he says, government is all a show. Yep. Joey says, great topics, a.k.a. it's Lady Sacra Moon. Hey, shout out. Shout out to you, Lady Sacra Moon. Um. Cameron says, would you ever consider having Trevor Hall on as a guest? That's a dream guest. Like I have a, I have a couple people. I'll, let's, let's say, speak, let's speak it out. Um, Trevor Hall is a, is a, a, a guest I, I want to have. Nako, Nako Bear from Medicine for the People. Um, Sonny Sandoval from POD. And uh, let's see who else we can. Um, I've got some other little smaller ones I love to talk to. Morgan Lander from the band Kitty. Brian Head Welch, I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know, I need to get him on. <laughs> He's thinking about it. Um, yeah, I said Killer Priest. I mean, there's a couple people. Those are some of my top ones, though. It was funny, too, because I posted on, on uh, YouTube uh, just a post. I said, who, who do you guys want me to interview? And somebody mentioned, like, all those names. And I was like, dude, that's my lineup. Like, those are the people I want to have on. But we, we reached out to um, uh, one of his agents, uh, uh, publicist uh, reached out to me to get some other guests on and they work with him. So I said, Hey, can you see about getting them on? This was over a year ago. So I'm, I've been thinking about trying to reach out to him again. The podcast has grown a lot. Um, so, you know, maybe he'll do it. I seen he did an interview with Danica Patrick, the uh, NASCAR <laughs> girl, you know, interesting, but yeah, Trevor Hall is definitely a huge inspiration. Love his music. It's been a soundtrack for my spiritual awakening. Takes me back check out his music he's got a an album called chapter of the forest and there's some other stuff too he's got but that one right there in particular from the first song to the last go out in nature listen to it it's amazing let's see joey says icp whoop whoop 
Oh, uh, so Top of Top says, and I quoted this recently, if voting made a difference, it would be illegal. I agree. 100%. 100%. It's the illusion of choice. It's the dictatorship disguised as democracy. That's what I believe. I believe that's what we have. They make us think that we have a choice. Hey, guys, what about this? Oh, you did it. Y'all voted for me. I didn't. You know, and it make you think that the people did it. Uh, Irk also, we're talking about, because I know I'm behind on some of these comments, so I'm going to try to reiterate. It's all part of the conversation. Irk says, the cross and crown symbolizes the marriage of the church and, church and state in England. Dope. Deep. Thank you uh, for the donation. Joey donated. And uh, I know somebody else. Richie, too. Thank you, Richie, for the donation, too. Um, what is the most practical way to soul travel? I put out a uh, a meditation called, um, it's got two names. It's called Astral Travel Guided Meditation, and it's called Spirit Travel Guided Meditation. There's two versions. One's for the Christian and one's for the the spiritual person. And they're both the same thing. It is what it is. Um, the most practical way for me um, is in that meditation. It's it's a practice that I've I've done and it's really helped me. But it's you start at the root chakra, and you have your intention there, and having the music on, the tones, the incense, all of that stuff kind of puts you into that heightened state of consciousness, that trance state, which the Bible talks about. Going into the trance state, starting there at the root, and then raising it up, uh, seeing the root chakra, the sacral. Solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown, and then when you get to the crown, leaving out. But the process of lighting up each chakra and seeing them spinning in motion and being cleansed. And so once you get to the top to raise your consciousness out of your body through the crown chakra um, is is an interesting way to do it. And I think doing it as an intentional way. Again, I have a meditation out there that, that uh, helps to do that. Um, but yeah, it's about it and being intentional. So I think that's a practical way to do it. Devin Marie, shout out. What's up, Devin? Uh, hey, I have some friends over here checking out the podcast for the first time. They dig it. I like it. I knew they would. Hey, shout out to you. Thank you for turning people on to what we're doing. Um, so Top of the Top says, are all pastors in on shilling on alternate, uh, alternating intervals? I wonder if if I'm um if I get this right. I don't think that they all are. I think many of them know that they're you know they they feel like what they're doing is the right thing, but uh but I think that eventually the research, the study, whether it's of the Bible or just of life in general, you you learn some truths about some things that we were taught uh in religion that are downright lies. Again, talking about tithing. And so I, the, the, what really turns me off is that when when if these pastors learn that what they're doing is anti-biblical, but it keeps the money coming, like, would they stop doing it? Would they teach it another way? And I want to give a shout out to Brian Jones from the Cave Ministries. There was some when we were going there and we were really big on this at the time. And this was man, this was years ago. This is probably 2010 or so, maybe even before. But um, we pulled him to the side and, and talked to him about tithing. And he said, yeah, the Lord been showing me some stuff on that, too. And I'm glad y'all said something. And then from that moment on, he never taught it the same way again. And, uh, you know, so someone who's able to change uh, because they know that we're all a work in progress versus a pastor who um, it's church doctrine. It's the belief of this denomination. Even though I don't agree, I have to teach it this way, because if they find out that I'm not, they're going to get rid of me. You know, so you have a lot of that going on. So that inner battle or inner inner struggle with a lot of uh, preachers and, and things who once they come to the knowledge of the truth, are they able to teach it and are they able to make those inner changes? I think it uh, speaks volumes for that individual. And I don't think it's a lot of them, you know, so it's just a sad thing. And it's why it's hard to, for a lot of us to go to church. And, and once we're illuminated, once we learn certain things, it's hard for us to sit in church services where they continue to teach half truths and uh and they're and exalting their opinion over whether it's the scriptures or just injustices and things like that so yep good question though Eric says the father at the last episcopal church i went to had a personal logo that freaked me out it was a dog 
on a tilted cross. Yeah, crazy. Let's see. A greyhound, to be specific. Hmm, deep. Just because I listened to a podcast snippet from Theo Vaughn about greyhounds this morning and what they represent, at least the greyhound bus station. So it's interesting. Gavin says, I can listen to Tibetan incantations and your music and never get tired of it. Big up on your music, Derek. It's ageless, bro. Mantra of Avalanakeshvara styles, man. Hey, thank you. Yeah, for reason. And I think that that's why I'm um, I'm not so hesitant to continue to like pump out music uh, because I, I I want it all to be that way. I want it to all come from a place of beauty, of creativity, um, that all of my music can can um, um, evoke those experiences for you. And I don't think that just throwing, creating a song for the sake of it has the, the power to do that. I think like every song that I've done, they represent different things to me and, and bring me back and, and evoke something in me. You know, and so I want to I want to honor that that process of, of creating. And so lately there hasn't been I haven't worked on a lot of music lately. I've been listening to a lot of beats. That's kind of the first thing that catches me um, is, a, is a beat. And so some of the producers I usually work with, like most of the stuff lately, I just it hasn't caught me. But there has been one that's caught me recently. I talked about it on the School of the Mystics. So there's a beat that I'm messing with right now. I tried to sing this hook that that I, I heard and I couldn't sing it. So I'm reaching out to someone else to sing it for me. So as soon as they uh, lay this hook down and we get it sounding right, the verses I just know are going to come just because the the beat has the ability to pull me in. But I want it to uh, I want to be inspired um, you know, my early work, I had a lot of movie samples and movie references in there that talked about spirituality and linked things together for me or were breadcrumbs. And I put those in the music as well. I want to continue having that. But in order to do that, I have to be, you know, I have to watch movies and, and documentaries that that speak to me. And I haven't, you know, found a lot lately. There's there's a couple here that I need to go back and save that I heard things in in movies and there's a show now on Netflix called Lock and Key. And uh, there's just some interesting phrases that were mentioned in, in that show talking about doorways. And um, once you have the key to go through a door, then you can always go through that door. And it was really interesting about uh, these doors that were portals into other realms or dimensions. And we're only on the first episode, but it was really interesting. So I'm excited to watch that. But there's a couple of phrases and stuff that I want to be able to articulate and, 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 and birth into a song that it's going to be forever. Like that song is there. You know, I want it to be something that's going to inspire me. I want it to be something that I like versus like, you know, just being able just knowing how to write a song or talking about Kundalini or some far out stuff. It needs to embody something for me. But I think it's coming. Michael, people have dreams of Trump on here. I'm sure, bro. I, I don't think I have, but uh, I'm sure people have, right? I have some weird dreams, and it's not, and just because I'm talking about it now, and you're talking about it, we're all probably going to have dreams about Trump tonight, just because I mentioned it. It's just how that works. Um, Shout out to Christy Johnson. She says, praise God. Let's go through some more. And if you guys have questions, ask the questions. If you want to throw a curveball, you know, it's all good. Let's see. Glee says, thanks, Derek. That brought lots of light. I will check on those references you mentioned, too. For sure, for sure. Hello, Shelly. Star Walker. Um, Chris Garner says, empathy is an ESP gateway. For sure. Let's see. Going through these comments, guys, and trying not to give no dead air. Richie says, we live our politics. For sure. You live your You live your beliefs. What you really believe comes out, you know, your faith. Let's see. Well, here we go. Boyd. Boyd says, uh, I guess talking about politics, it's like choosing your favorite character on Sesame Street. Yeah. Politics. Poly means many. The word poly. And ticks are blood sucking insects. Politics. Yeah. Top says Trump is a prop for ideas. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get away from some of the uh, Zionist Rockefeller stuff that I'm reading here and some of the Trump stuff. 
like a church sign said, don't be open minded that your brains fall out. Shelly says, yeah. Martin says it's all for political power and to get numbers. Yep. Isn't that what it's all for? Shout out to all you guys. Anybody got any questions? Make sure you drop it in chat and I'll change the subject. Leaving it up to you. You pick it. You pick the topics. Ethan says, I've always been very politically outspoken and such. Okay, yeah, going back to that one more time with the Trump thing and uh, sharing memes and funny stuff on Facebook. I was joking. And I said, I just did a joke. I don't know why I did it, but I was like, I was joking, but maybe I meant it. I don't know. But I said, um, if you if you're voting for Trump, this is when Trump was running. If you're voting for Trump, please delete me. I was joking. Man, I, a lot of close friends deleted me. They're like, okay, see you, buddy. It's been fun. I was like, oh, no. Even some of the far left liberal people, like spiritual people, they're like, see you, buddy. But they're from the South, you know. Um, I was like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. You know, this is my, you know, my audience, my friends, my, uh, and now it's got awkward because I made a statement about Trump or whatever. So I've tried to not do that as much. Um, let's see. Shelly says, I know what Jordan Maxwell taught me for sure. All right. Let's see. We're struggling with duality. Ain't nobody got time for that for sure. Let's see. Going down, going down. Uh, Baba says apocalypse. Maybe have an apocalypse on here. I was supposed to get beast on here. Beast 1333. Uh, I mean, he told me he would do it. Um, but that was like probably going on six months ago. I don't know. I try to reach out to him without begging. You don't be begging nobody for nothing. But you have not because you ask not. But once you give your word, man, all I have is my word. I try to stand by that. You can believe, you can bet that I'm going to move heaven and hell to, to try to stand by my word if I say something. Adam says that's a demonic republic that controls the system. However, there is good people taking over and get, getting rid of the weeds in the system. I don't know. I don't know. You probably mean Trump is that good good person that's taken over. A lot of people believe it. Like I said, Adam says, I would say Jonathan Davis, but don't, but John don't like spiritual woo woo. Yeah, you're right. I don't know what I would talk to him about just because he doesn't like that kind of stuff. Um, he's opening up a little bit more to it though, but I, I'd like to get Brian on and hopefully he'll do it. He's been there on tour right now. Let's see reading some of these top of top says weed is a gateway drug it frees the mind of the slaves but makes the crutch but makes a crutch like dependence yeah for some people for sure going through here flying penguin says you've inspired me to release guided meditations as well i'm releasing my first one today heck yeah man do it justice bro do it justice because like I could even, you know, for me, it's like, um, okay, I know you do the uh, the garden meditation, like taking people into the garden to spend time with Jesus. And so that would be a beautiful meditation. That's probably what you're releasing. But I can, like, the sound effects is what sets my a lot of my meditations apart. Even, like, I have one of this, the, the chakra cleansing or the seven spirits of God cleansing. And there's this, like, as I'm working on and writing these meditations, I'm hearing sounds come to me of what it would sound like. And I have to search the Internet and try to make sounds and manipulate them to get the sound that I want. And so the chakra spinning one, there's this whooshing sound whoosh, whoosh that I heard. And I was like, man, I got to find it. And I finally found it. And I, I took a sound and I manipulated it. It's a wind and it goes back and forth through the headset. And just that sound when you're hearing it, the whooshing. I mean, the whoosh even is the sound of the womb. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. It's like a, it's almost like the sound of the heartbeat and the pulse or whatever. And it's a cleansing vibe to it as well. So when you do the your meditations, I think that uh, putting the the sounds in there, you know, of the what 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 does the uh, the garden sound like? Are there birds chirping in the background? Are there children playing? That's what sets my meditations apart. And I've, um, I really, I know that takes a lot more editing and a lot more things, but I, I love it, man. I've been hiring voice actors to come in and play 
specific roles of people and of angels and of the mother and of bystanders and of scoffers and man just it's taking the creativity to a whole nother level i love making those guided meditations um and if you haven't heard my meditations you definitely need to check them out I, I, the uh the throne room meditation is out of this world guaranteed to uh if you give yourself over to the experience to change your life man it's beautiful people have had coming back to me in tears and just people who don't even you just got to listen you got to listen um Mar marie says is tithing a lie i don't know tithing is not a lie but just the way that most of us are taught in the u.s uh to to manipulate us is a lie <clears throat> as far as god is going to curse you if you don't tithe <clears throat> that's a lie that's definitely a lie 100 percent um tithing is beautiful you know a lot of people tithe into what i'm doing there's a they sow into what i'm doing they believe in this podcast they know that it takes money to do this you know um so they believe in it and then they fund it financially and so that's what tithing was supposed to be it's to take care of the ministers uh, who are ministering before the lord the, the the worship leaders the musicians the priest they couldn't go out and get a job this is what they did and so people took care of them they gave a portion of their income over to uh, what the work of the ministry, you know, a portion of their income. Well, not it wasn't always money. It, it, it was at some points it was money, but other times it was food. Look, you're gonna take care of the cost of living. You'll never worry about food. We're gonna make sure that you eat. We're gonna make sure that your families eat because they believed in what they were doing. So that that is beautiful. That is, uh, like you're going to give where you get your blessings, right? But to tie in the manipulation that if you don't do it, God is cursing you. And there's a lot of witchcraft. There's a lot of lies and deception that comes along with tithing in the, uh, in the Christian church here. And, um, even they go without, without saying it, will, will a man rob God, but yet you have robbed me, even this whole nation, like saying that if we don't tithe, we're robbing God. That's a, that's a lie. That's that scripture was not for us. It's addressed to somebody very specifically. And, um, you know, so it's a lot of manipulation, which is witchcraft um, that is going on in these churches when it comes to tithe. Tithing is awesome. You should definitely support whatever it is that you believe in. I, let me let me rephrase that. I don't want to say you should support what you believe in. You are supporting what you believe in with your money. Your, where your treasure is, your treasure is your money, there your heart will be also. You know, I talk about it all the time. People say, I got a heart for the starving children in Africa, man. I just want to, I'm called to Africa. Oh, you sending money? Are you helping them people? I know people who are. And it's making it, and it don't take a lot of money. I think, uh, shout out to Tate. Tate Zinzer had him on the podcast, three hour episode. He asked a couple people for some money. And people donated and they was able to bless these kids with all types of little toys and, and trinkets for, for Christmas and to feed them and all kind of stuff. Because he has a heart for those people. Don't say you believe in something. Don't say you have a heart for the, for these people and you're not spending any money. Don't say that you believe in something and you're not in because your money proves what you believe in. I got friends who they dress to the T. They'll spend their whole paycheck on clothing. New clothes, new fitted. They want to Im Im impress the, keep up with the Joneses and impress the neighbors and have the finest shoes and two hundred dollar Jordans and all of these expense. They spend all their money on their clothes. That's what they believe in. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So you can't tell me you don't care how you look. You can't tell me you don't care about other people's opinions of you. Your money tells us. So anything that you buy, if you love going out to eat, you're gonna spend the majority of your paycheck going out to eat. Taking your family, if you like to smoke, if you like to smoke weed, you know, whatever it is that you have, you spend money on it. You can't lie. Your your money shows what you believe in. So it's not that you should support with what you believe in, but you do support it with your money. Going through some more of these comments here. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Martin says uh, they want to go to the Old Testament for tithing. Blessed if you do, cursed if you don't, but then go to the New Testament on other things. It's to control with fear. Yeah, that was kind of the first thing that kind of set me free. Is like, especially when we started like keeping kosher and like doing some of the things that are in the law and stuff like that. Messianic. 
Christianity, um, the, the tithing thing was a big one. It's like, hold on, why do y'all like not, why, why y'all preaching tithing, but y'all not preaching the dietary law? Like, why are y'all preaching tithing, but y'all aren't preaching this? And y'all, you guys just picking and choosing what you want to keep because it fits your agenda, you know? And the tithing is a big one. And 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 um, I just went through the scriptures and, and wrote down for my own sake and to teach it everywhere that the Bible says that I'm blessed. And the book of Psalms says I'm blessed simply because I believe, you know? There's so many scriptures in the Bible that say that we're blessed and we're highly favored and, and all of these things. But, you know, they want to teach the other other side of it. Say you're cursed because you're not giving us money. You know, Gavin says, Derek, what do you know about Evo Morales? I don't I don't think I know anything about that name. Let me read some more. Devin Marie says, what helps you when you go through those periods of a spiritual plateau? What is the main thing that gets you back in it again? Doing the first works. Doing the first works. There's um certain songs that I don't really listen to all the time because they're very special to me. And I know like if I listen to that song, it'll bring me to that place instantly. You know, there's music that I have there. Um when I when I just feel out of whack or something. Uh, but there are times, man, where you feel like you get off the path and I've, I've been there, you know, but I think it's doing the first works, like doing the things that, you know, um, that you did to get there, <laughs> you know, and it may be something else that you need to do. Right. Um, but but definitely go into where, you know, the peace is and uh, and start seeing uh, God move in your life and seeing uh, synchronicities again and those kind of things, you know. But I don't think that that, um, you know, if if you're not seeing it, I don't think that it's like you're less any less spiritual or things aren't really popping off for you or whatever the case is. But we, you kind of know when you're out of whack. So that's somebody I want to get on the podcast too, Shelly. I, uh, Theo Vaughn. She says the, Theo Vaughn is a funny man. Um, I shared yesterday too his story about overcoming uh alcoholism and uh, how he uh, he quit drinking. It was it was emotional, so I'd love to have him on here to talk about that. Let's see, going through some of these comments, trying to skip over some of the political ones. I know I'm a little bit behind um, with the chat. Um, love, learn, grow. Let's see. Deb Casey says, "Love the new show by Netflix. Watching for Mystic references. Awesome, awesome concepts. Yeah." I tell you what I did watch on there uh, on Netflix too. Don't f with cats. I didn't want to watch it because I thought it was about cats. Like I thought it was, but that was crazy. That was a crazy show. That dude was shot out, man. That was wild. Um, let me keep reading here. Richie says, "What do you think about community gatherings and small garage band style concerts versus big arena shows, man?" You know, I was thinking about that recently because we just went and seen Tool, right? And um, and there's a lot of people who would say, you know, and I heard somebody say, man, I miss mosh pits, man. I miss mosh, I miss mosh pits. And uh, you're not going to mosh pit at a Tool concert anymore. You're probably not going to mosh at many of these concerts, especially when it's a stadium with stadium uh, seat, seating. Um, I enjoy both. If I have to pick, the house show, man, the garage band house show. Um, they're few and far between, but I miss them. I miss them. I miss being in uh, a house with a band and, and artists and things and just shoulder to shoulder. There's no room. Like literally, you cannot move. The band is right here in front of you. If you get too close, you might get hit with the guitar. Like I really miss those uh, those concerts. Um, so there was a thing, too, when we were booking shows back in the day that everybody wanted the big venue. Like they wanted to like all the small artists wanted to play at the big, um, what it was, the, uh, the Sanger theater or these big theaters and stuff. And cause you're like, yeah, I'm playing this theater, man. You kind of feel like you made it or whatever, but there's an old blues song, the smaller the club, the bigger the party in the dance floor. You can barely move. It's a rhythm and blues song. And it's a, it's a pretty cool song, but, um, that's so true. Like being at these little shows, man, where there's no standing room, my friends would rent venues and they would rent big venues 
and they and, and let's say if 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 you got lucky and 60 people showed up to the show at a big venue everybody's spread out there's people in the back there's someone in the bathroom there's like there's people on the balcony and the crowd is so spread out that it, it just feels different the vibe is different but if you had those same 60 people in a coffee shop in a small coffee shop the vibe is just so you know it's just so so good so i, I like the small ones but the bigger ones are too uh, g- cool too because like the the lighting and the stage show that that tool put on for sure man there's so much that goes into that and the visuals and uh man it was just insane like they they did a really good job um with that but i like both man but i love i like both but i love house shows in small places read through here yo that would be the first that would be fire to have Beast 1333 on here, Dylan says. Um, I'll hand it at him on social media. I'd love to see him on your podcast. For sure. Everybody, yeah, do that. Uh, whoever you want to see on here, put a bug in their ear. Tell them to email me. It's that simple. I get an email. You know, I don't I don't choose a lot of these guests, guys. They reach out to me. You know, I, I, and I'm, I'm learning so much. I'm meeting so many new people. I mean, I have the people that I would like to interview. I like to switch it up from time to time. I don't like to just keep you know, talking about the same thing over and over and over, like with different episodes, I do love to switch it up. Curveball, Irk says, is it possible that the earth is, earth is flat? All things are possible to him (laughs) who believes. All things are possible. So, let's see. Moving on. Let's see. Flying penguins agreed. Your production quality is top notch on the guide of meditations. You are amazing. Mine is very basic. Man, I could just picture it. I'm maybe I'll work with you and may, maybe let me do it or something, and um, just let you do the the you know the narration or something. But I can see it of walking with Jesus and just hearing the foot's wa- feet walking. You just hear them steps. You know, walking through the grass with Jesus and all that. Shelly says, have you reached out to Michael Tessarian? I need to reach out to him again. Uh, I don't know. Let me check. I'm going to check my email right quick because I feel like I did reach out to him again. But I don't know. Michael Tessarian. He's a, he's a, he's a go-to as well. Um, I definitely would like to have him on. Um, maybe I need to reach out to him again. But, uh. Yeah, he's a go-to. And I, I did reach out to him years ago, and he was so busy at the time. So him, I'd love to have Stephen Greer. I even want to have Corey Good on, even though I don't, I believe he's full of it. I'd love to ask him some questions, you know. Um, Chris Barr says, get some people that speak on balance, spiritual, and being human. Hey, you got it, bro. You got it, mister. That's what we're doing. That's what this show is. It's about balance. And you get away from me with all that so so spiritual, you're no earthly good. People look at the human experience like it's a demon experience. Escapism. Escapism. You know, we got people who just all they do want to do is just, and I think astral travel, I think spirituality can be an escapism. I think there's some healthy, I think that we all have little places that we escape to, but um, but not to not deal with life. I like to escape, to go get inspiration from the spirit realm, from God, from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit and whatever they want to send me. I get inspiration there to face my battles. You know what I'm saying? To know that I'm not alone, to know that I stand on the back of giants, to know that that's why I love Tool, mentioning the band Tool. Like they talk about every aspect. Now, they got some far out, deep spiritual stuff about conversations between angels looking down on humanity they have songs about uh uh, a conversation that we have before we uh incarnated here and and who we really are and remembering our essence of what we were and what we are spiritually before we incarnated here they got some far out beautiful doing shadow work they have songs about doing shadow work but then they also also reconcile that with just being human the human experience and not running from that and i accept my divinity and my right to be a human and so we find out in a lot of religious circles this like 
you have to escape being a human. We only want to do the spiritual stuff. We only want to do the, you know, if it ain't spiritual, if you're not talking about spiritual, you're talking about, nah, I'm, you got to embrace all of it, man. Every single aspect of it. So that's, I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Uh, Dylan says, where can I find your meditations? A couple places, really. If you go to truthseeker.com, you can just click on meditations at the top. There's also like a membership thing that I'm working on to, to kind of be promoted differently. There's some different meditations on there, but if you guys just want to check it out, it's a membership. You can actually get access to all of these for like 99 cent a trial and then a monthly fee after that. But uh, it's christian-meditations.com. And uh, there's some affirmations and things that I've been working on, um, reciting Bible verses that are targeted towards certain uh, aspects or things that we're going through. I just did a one. It's not released yet. Probably be up here. It's it's on ChristianMeditations.com, Christian-Meditations.com. But it uh, the I am, just some beautiful I am um, mantras that, that I'm just saying and recorded with music and there's prayers in it. And um, so for, for me, there were some that um, some of you have heard me talk about, like in my mirror, in my bedroom or bathroom, I have written around me in, in red marker on the mirror. It just takes my silhouette and it says, I am more than a conqueror. I am a new creation. I am free. I am blessed. I am forgiven. And so when I'm in the mirror doing my hair, brushing my, I don't do my hair, um, brushing my teeth or whatever, um, putting on deodorant. I'm standing in the silhouette of, of the I am. And so those I am's that I wrote, I put in a meditation that you can, it's looped for an hour with some beautiful music and some prayers and affirmations in it as well. So you can download those. And uh, there's a bunch more. There, there's some of, some of them are just affirmations, like biblical affirmations, which are so powerful. You know, all of them are powerful because like I've been able to have my own encounters with them. Like while I'm writing them, and I'm saying these scriptures and I'm declaring them over myself and I'm declaring them over the person. And I know that the word of God does not return void, that it goes out and it does what it's supposed to do. And I know that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And just by hearing these affirmations and hearing these meditations, it can change your life. Tearing down strongholds and ungodly beliefs and false ideas that you've accepted knowingly and unknowingly. So I already know christian-meditations.com there's some other ones on there too i'm gonna put them on my patreon if you're at a certain level on patreon you'll get them as well so uh yeah make sure you check them out but my favorites it definitely is gonna be the first one i that i did which was the throne room guided meditation there's the encountering jesus meditation to where you're taken back to ancient israel and a jerusalem and you're walking through the, the streets and that was that one's interesting too and you you meet jesus and uh but you meet other people who come in and tell you why you shouldn't be here and all of those kind of things. But then you finally run into the Messiah and have your encounter. Um, I, there's one, it's not as popular, maybe because I didn't promote it as much, but it's one of the newer ones. It's the uh, Heavenly Father, Mother Earth guided meditation where you go into the heavens and you encounter the presence and love of God out of your body in the heavens and then you come back to your body and you go down to the center of the earth and you're greeted by your mother. And so to be held and loved by your heavenly father and earthly mother in that encounter and experience. And again, there's sound effects of traveling, of ascending, of um, the, going through the, the rock and uh, through the earth. And I really love that stuff. So all of them have those in, uh, voice actors. And even the even the Father God one, I think, is uh, I have a, I have an old man that I hired, a voice actor, do it. He sounds like Gandalf. Hello, I love you. You know, and it's really cool. Which I obviously could have did the voice, right? Um, then there's the mother. There's a woman. That's uh, so I'm guiding it, and just gotta check it out. It's a whole. It's like a movie with your eyes closed, and it's an experience, and there's prayers, and just check it out. Christian-meditations.com. There's a bunch of them. Um, your meditations are awesome. Gavin says, can't wait to step up gradually as a Patreon supporter. Hey man, thank you so much. Um, okay. So Shelly says, I don't know his name, but his show was the Freeman perspective. Have you heard of him? We did a, yeah, that's Freeman fly with the Freeman perspective. Um, we did an interview with him a long time ago, but it was more of a laid back interview. 
Um, a, a guy, Alonzo, was doing his website, and he knows that uh, he's always talking about conspiracies and far out stuff, but he loved music. So he's like, hey, let's have him on and just not even really talk about a lot of conspiracy stuff. So we had uh, Freeman Fly on here, and uh, it was a short episode, but we got it. It's in the archives, close to the beginning. You had to go like episode probably four or something like that. Uh, but it's an older one when I had a couple of co-hosts with me, uh, Freeman Fly. Um, so uh, Love Learn Grow says Tessarian is has been broken, but he will rel- relive again. top of top says pagan ideas like astral projecting uh, maybe scrying can be good for or bad in everyone to anyone what gifts or ideas should we monitor or regulate or ignore um we talked about it this weekend on a podcast that i did with somebody it'll be released soon too but your unction you have you have an unction for the function you already be kind of operating pay attention to the signs it works through your imagination like what you're good at, what you're called to do. Prophets prophesy. Seers see. And there's already a gifting that's probably s- formulated somewhere in your life, whether you're having crazy dreams, vivid dreams, dreams about the future, dreams about your own life. If, you, if somebody tells you their dream and as soon as they tell you, you already know what it means, look, like look into this, like focus on it. Give it some more attention. Uh, and at the end of my book, I talk about interacting with God in the spirit realm and angels and demons and spirits and all of that through these senses. And, uh, and I give you some practical examples of, of in the Bible of, you know, clear audience, clear sentience, clear touch, being able to feel, Hey, Jesus, who touched me? You know, when he being able to look at people and know things about them that, that, uh, nobody else knows, you know, and then how to focus on that and get better at it. So whatever it is, there's so many of them, you know, so whatever, uh, you're drawn to, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd say, pray about it. Ask God, like, what is this? Like, ask God to show you and he'll lead you to information. He'll lead you to te- teachers and videos and movies even that show you what you've been experiencing. You know what I'm saying? That's how synchronicity works. But God does it all. The author and finisher of your faith, of your story. He wrote it. He's got it all. Go to him, figure it out, and he'll unlock it in the waking state as well. This is the awesome part about it. But you said pagan ideas like astral projecting, like uh, obviously in my book, I, I show you how those are even biblical. You know, Paul left his body and went to the third heaven and came back and was like, look, I saw things that I'm not permissible to speak about, you know, but I'll try. You know what I'm saying? But still do a dis- disservice. And so we we we've had very um, similar encounters when it comes to that. And, and there's other going into trances the bible uses that word trance the trance state i was in a trance on the lord's day the lord opened up my vision and brought me into a trance and showed me things so yeah it's definitely like not pagan you know what i'm saying so we try to look at it like something outside of christianity or outside of the hebrew roots movement or outside of you know being a christian or the bible you know shout out to Tarek bibby love you brother see you in the chat to Syrian is is angry and has lost hope in humanity sort of like what's happening to jordan man that sucks i haven't heard anything uh from him lately um but that sucks i pray that um i pray that i i don't (laughs) i pray that we all don't get that way wouldn't that suck but i think being conscious of it i think that's what it when you when you get so overhyped and overzealous about the world and you don't do the spiritual work yourself, it's easy. Like, it's easy to get caught up. It's easy to get mad and lose hope. That's why I I promote spirituality with it. That's why I promote relationship with Christ. Uh, think on these things. Uh, and I, I'm going to make a snippet of it, but I uh, I went into, like, you know, the uh, the dangers of conspiracy theories and always freaking yourself out and always being scared. Like, how about freak? How about freak yourself out with the love of God. Wow. How about wake up and just have your mind blown every day of the deepness and the vastness and even how shallow the love of God can be. Man, have that blow your mind. Seeing him in everything. Seeing wonder in life and and a message and communion and everything. 
because the other the, uh, the opposite of seeing evil and everything it's seeing wickedness and everything it's exposing both are real both of those truths are very real but you have to pick what are you going to focus on and i think that changing yourself doing the inner work changes the other side i think that your aura your choices everything about you is going to change and it's going to have a ripple effect it's going to change the world by changing yourself you indeed change the world that's why i'm big on it that's why i don't just talk about conspiracies or get into all that you know i I know the danger it has but it opens a lot of people up to ask bigger questions you know but it's definitely not a means to an end Love, Learn, Grow says, I lost a lot of friends because I voted for Trump. Uh, And said, best president ever. Maybe he could be. Yeah. Maybe he could be, but he needs to repent. I know, right? (laughs) Polarizing. Cutting it right down the middle. Split it right in two. I've given you all this, but let's split it up. Straw borders. When are you going to shave that beard and hair? Hmm. Don't know. Hopefully never. I don't want to lose my power. Power in the hair. Power in the beard. Fear the beard. Chris says, still water. Yep, that's a good one. One of my favorites. By a song by uh, Trevor Hall. Sorry, just here to shake you up some, brother. Love you, man. No joking. For sure. It's so funny. We've been talking about my hair and beard lately on different podcasts. Deb interviewed me last night and says, "What does your What does your wife think about your beard? Does she like your beard?" And it's just a shake. This is you know fun conversation or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, I think she should have me shave it if she had her way." I was like, "Hold on, ask her." And yelled for my wife. She came in here and I said, "Ask her." She's like, "Oh, I like it. Maybe a little shorter, but she likes it." Chris Barr says, "You're not reading Facebook comments." Yes, I am. I just I've been reading your Facebook comments, dude. I see both of them here. A warrior for Christ, brother, for sure. A warrior for love. Trump is anointed, uh, Tiny Skirt says. Uh, And Christ, I mean love and light. Isn't that funny that I didn't read your comment, but I knew what you meant, and then you explained it? Isn't that awesome? Heartline says, uh, it irritates me how the church is so big on calling us worthless sinners and how we're nothing without Christ. I just feel like it's a cop out. It gives people an excuse to be unwhole. We are his image. There's a there's a, a a lot to be said there. A lot to be said. Richie says a binaural ambisonic storytelling. Yep, yep. Go through some more of these questions. Uh Janelle says have Calvin Witcher again. Yeah, I need to. I love Calvin. He's amazing. We we've talked about doing some some stuff together um in person doing some events. I want to do more events. Y'all talk to your pastor see if they'll let me come to your church. <laughs> Psych. You could you can rent a coffee shop. We'll do it at the coffee shop. Um or the church, hey, like, I don't know. People are changing, man. There's a lot a lot of this these conversations are being had in churches now, which just gives me hope. Gives me hope. For real. They're talking about astrology. They're talking about spirit travel. They're talking about chanting. They're talking about all kind of frequencies of music. Shout out, man. Church, church folks are waking up. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to <clears throat> Lee and Christina Day, which they sent me some Moldavite for my birthday and just came in yesterday from Denver. Thank you for the Moldavite. What I said in my song, Bad Vibes I Fight with my Moldavite. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try to install it right there to open up my third eye. Keep it. That's spo- oh, it's supposed to be pretty powerful. So I've been playing with it. Somebody said Corey Good died. What are you talking about, bro? David Wilcock. Kurt, Corey Good's in the emergency room. you lying. February 2019. You're trying to trip me up, man. You tripping me up. Uh, do you think Stephen Greer is full of it? Uh, Cameron says, I don't know anything about Corey Good. Stay away from Corey Good. Follow Stephen Greer. <laughs> I like uh, 
I like Stephen Greer. Um, a lot of people don't. I don't. For me, I don't think he's done anything that really uh, shocks me as far as like. But I haven't kept up with him as much in recent years. But definitely getting into it, the CE5 initiative and that kind of thing. I really like Stephen Greer. He's actually got meditations where that lead you into CE5 contact. So I like Greer. I'm sure there's things out there if I do my research that'll make me mad and recant that statement. Chris Barr says, yes, thank you. I just like to see balance. Yeah, bro, it's balance, bro. We're bringing it to the people. I mean, uh, lateralis, man. The lyrics, let's see. Um, Lateralis by Tool. And I, I share, I've been sharing these. I think I posted these lyrics like over and over just because it's it's so good. It's so good. Um, mm, just all, the, I like read the lyrics to the whole song, but uh, overthinking, overanalyzing separates the body from the mind, withering my intuition, leaving opportunities behind. Feed my will to feel this moment. Feed my will to feel this moment, urging me to cross the line, reaching out to embrace the random. What's life going to throw at me now? Reaching out to embrace whatever may come. Then it says, I embrace my desire to feel the rhythm, to feel connected, enough to step aside and weep like a widow, to feel inspired, to fathom the power, to witness the beauty, to bathe in the fountain, to swing on the spiral, to swing on the spiral of our divinity and still be a human. Come on, man. Cause I'm telling you, it's escapism. Beings on the other side, envy what you got. I wish I could do it again. I want to go back. I wish I could be a human. This, don't escape this. Cause when you, you we're, we're ascension and leaving the body and astral travel and going to heaven every day. It's a form of escapism. Not to face your problems, to bring you, to take you to a place where everything's okay. But knowing that heaven is inside of you and everything is okay. Everything's going the way it's supposed to go. Because I'm telling you, like, we're, we're, we're wanting to leave. We're wanting to astral travel, go to heaven, go to Mars, go to all these places. But when you die, you're going to be there. You'll be like, damn, I wish I would have been in my body more. I wish I would have. It's, hey man, we 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 get, we let you experience the human experience, but you just wanted to check out. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You kept the grass is greener on the other side. Now you're dead. Now you want to reincarnate and go back and do it again. Now you're dead. Now you envious of of the living. Embrace the moment. That's all we have. This moment right now. No matter where you are listening to this, this moment. It's precious, it's magical, it's beautiful. You get to choose this day who you will serve. You get to choose what you want to do. And I do. I love spiritual practice. I love spiritual work. It helps me to be mindful. It doesn't help me to escape reality. It helps me make my reality more beautiful. You know, to knowing, knowing the, the uh, possibilities to inspire pretty much everything that song said. To do that for myself and for other people. Embrace, embrace this moment, man, because it's fleeting. Those words I said just now, it doesn't exist anymore. It's in the past. All we have is this moment. That moment doesn't exist. We have now. There is no past. There is no future. All there is is now. It's the now moment. Once you understand that, there's a lot of power in that, in the alchemical process to, to make choices, to take responsibility for your actions. In the now moment, not, you know, regretting what you did yesterday or what you're going to do tomorrow, but understand and you can have an idea of tomorrow, definitely. But choosing today what your tomorrow is going to look like and then be open for the randomness because you, you ain't got no you don't have you don't have any choice but to do that. So not embracing it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Baba says you should interview Devin Magdi, Flat Earth Paradise. Oh, my God. You know, I'm not really big into the Flat Earth thing. It's cool. I mean, it's cool, but I just not really. A, it's again, the you know, the price of rice in China. What's it got to do with anything? 
for me. Like, how's that going to help me be a better father if I figure out the earth is flat, you know? But he says that show would be lit. Hey, this is your show, man. You want them, tell them to email me. I'm not reaching out to any flat earthers, but if they reach out to me, we might make it happen. So tell them to email me. Uh, Belle Twig is an older mystic woman. She would be fascinating. Cool, cool. Same thing. Like, tell them to email me because I'm super busy and I, I do reach out to people. But, I mean, we're we're booked like, shoot, I think we're booked two months for the podcast. Um, Let's see. I'm looking up my schedule now. Yeah. I got a couple of days in March that are open. But uh, we are definitely booked. But I want to continue booking. So tell them to reach out. Chris Barr says, people want to be spiritual yet lack being responsible. Balance seems to work for me. Balance works for everybody. They just don't know it. They don't know how to balance it. It's the pendulum. It's hard to keep that pendulum in the middle because it's going left, it's going right. The pendulum is a wrecking ball, tearing up bridges and burning bridges and destroying friendships and lives and all that kind of stuff. So you better learn balance. Keep that thing in the middle, man. And so everybody, uh, Irk says, I'd love to see Michael on here for sure. I need to get him on. Corey Good versus C.W. Chanter. Debate with True Seeker as the moderator. That could be a, a pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah. I checked out the C.W. Chanter dude, man. I don't really care for that guy. <laughs> I might like Corey Good more than that guy, and I don't like Corey Good. <laughs> But I'm supposed to be neutral, though, right? <laughs> I can't say who I like in my opinions, right? I will say, so Deb interviewed me last night. And um, and all this, you know, mysticism and astral travel and aliens and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of far out to believers, right? Chakras and crystals and pendulums and symbols and sacred geometry. It's kind of weird at first, right? Because it's new. And she was saying that she kind of got overwhelmed as a Christian stepping out into some of these things and some of the stuff I'm talking about. And she had to, but she came to a revelation to, in herself that God was calling her to into this realm to be a listener of the podcast and to do her own research. And uh, But then she said she heard a shift in, in my voice uh, a couple months ago where I kind of maybe took a little bit more responsibility or began, began to be more vocal about my beliefs on the podcast versus just letting the guests talk. And so a lot of people think that I believe like everything that the guest uh, believes, which is not true just because I don't, you know, combat them on that. I know if, I think the religious side, again, the, the protest side, the Protestant side, Hey, Hey, no, uh uh that's not the word that's not in the word that ain't the bible you made that up you know we want to call people out and i used to do it that's one reason why i don't do it as much i mean i'll give them my opinion at the end i'll do you know you find out what i believe but i try to weasel it in there in the conversation hey that's why the bible you know i go back to that but um i think that's why you have like a lot of shows networks who say the views and opinions of so-and-so broadcast is not as effect as ABC or whatever. You know, they at the beginning. That should be a given. Just because I have somebody on, True Seeker believes that all that. I don't believe in that. I'm pretty vocal about my skepticism. I want to see. I want to touch. I want to feel. I want to believe. You got to show me. You got to show me. I want to know. I'm like Thomas. I love Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Look, why y'all believe in all this stuff? Jesus told y'all that there are going to be many who comes in his name. And now y'all just believe this is him. He just died. He told us they're going to come and try to deceive us. You got to show me. He said, I won't believe until I see the holes in his hands where the nails were. And then if it, then I'll believe. And Jesus came to him and said, look, people give doubting Thomas a bad rap in the church. I love doubting Thomas. He said, you got to show me. I'm not going to follow anybody. Talking about their Jesus. Show me. That's my savior. Just following. So when he come back, we following some other person that looked like him, sounded like him, but it wasn't him. I want to see the holes in his hands. That's how I am. You know, I want to see. I want to encounter. I want to experience. And look where it's got me. So many crazy encounters, so many far out experiences. And God blesses that. I really believe it. Like you, 
your expectation brings about your manifestation and you want to see it. I want to know. I love it. Uh, top of top says my old pastor in K Kansas City, Missouri would call for healings. Then, uh, then blows the blows them on stage. Can these be real? Blows them. I don't boast them. I don't know what that is. I don't know if you gave a different if it was a typo. Blow them. I don't know. Uh, Chris Barr says brushing out the dreads. Yeah, I need some. I need you to come do some work on my dreads. I did work on your dreads and you undid them at our, we had a, a vacation a couple of years ago and I gave Chris a couple of dreads and uh, he pulled them out. <laughs> he brushed them out. His wife said, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. My wife hates my dreads. Just so you guys know, I love them though. Starting to take shape. Takes a long time. And they're set and forget. Like, I don't really do a lot of work on them. Some of them are crooked and bending and growing towards the sun and fat at the bottom. They're just, they just kind of have their own thing. Um, all right, Irk says, I know you're into certain types of divination. Are th there types that you consider off limits, like perhaps numerology or I Ching? You know, I think that, um, I think that we, we run into, uh, problems when we put a um ideology behind it a formula you know uh the tarot even like I, I i i respect the tarot and what it represents and the allegory that's in there right so i respect that but um i think that divination works off of our intuition and it works off of our own spiritual abilities that are given from god and so we use tools that kind of work with it so when we put a whole bunch of different um um what did you call it? Modalities into it or have to, or you have to do this. I mean, that's even one of the things with the Reiki thing. My buddy, uh, um, Andrew is big into it, but he talks about like the way they got Reiki was this man went up to a mountain and got these symbols or whatever and came back down and taught the symbols to, and there's rules and you have to be like activated by a Reiki, Reiki master, which means buying a session from them or something, right. And paying dues or whatever. So there's all these other things that are equipped with it when, you, you don't have to have any of them. You can indeed do all of them, but you don't need any of them, right? Because it works off of your God-given intuition. So I think we fall into traps with divination when we're putting all of these different rules in, and um, backgrounds and books and p making people jump through hoops to uh, work in, in them. So if that kind of, and so choose it, you know? I mean, there's people are going to tell you how to operate in it, but then like there's this one lady who I'm glad I didn't interview her at this point, but they sent me her book and she was lined up. This was a couple of years ago. She had a, a book called light language. And, uh, and I wanted to talk about light language. It's talking about speaking in tongues. That's what we would call it as a Christian. I really do like some of the new age terminology of light language and your spirit resonating. And they, you hear these, these truths that are universal, uh, but we've only heard it explained in certain ways just because how we were raised or whatever realm that we're in. So to hear other people speak about light language, I, I do light language. Like, I want to hear what you have to say. It's cool. I really like it. But she was doing it in a way that it was only her. And she, I listened to a different interview with her and she was like, only I can do this. I have been anointed to do this and no one else can do this. And I'm like, hold on. The reason I interview these people, because I'm showing you testimonies of what is available for them is also available for you. And I think that's the majority of people that I have on here, but it's when people get into the Messiah complex and think that it's only them or something that they unlocked, it's available for anybody. Like if you will believe it, you can receive it. You can achieve it to your wildest imagination. Um, Waldo says, Hey bro, I want to send a copy of your book to a loved one in prison. I think it's a good idea, but I feel like I need to do a follow up. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of times in prison, they, uh, books are, are, um, able to be sent. They're really, they let you send books, but, um, some of them are weird. It has to go, come straight from a manufacturer. So if you ordered it from Amazon, just put in their info, um, and as long as it's packaged by that company, they'll let it go there. I know that my brother used to get CDs in the mail and things, <clears throat> and he would order my CDs, but I couldn't send them to him. Like he had to get it straight from the manufacturer when he was locked up. So different rules in different prisons and states, I think. So 
Love, learn, grow says, got to keep building the fire. Life is too short. And consistency. Keep will and strength for sure. Keep in love. You're right. You're right. Tessarian is angry. He needs to get off of that to love. Man. You know, it's so funny. I try to I try to help these people, man. I try to let them see the beauty in life. And it's not just me. A lot of you guys are reaching out to them and, you know, they need to. They they have glimpses of it. They just need to stay in it. You know, I mean, you get set in your ways, man, when you get older. You know, that's why it's, you need to be open and, you know, you become an old soul. You be young but st- stuck in your ways <laughs> at 26, you know. Um, Heartline says, what are your thoughts on angel numbers? I don't really know much to give a, uh, I don't know much about the angel numbers to give a, But, hey, 333, angelic contact. You know, I think that angels and the divine uses synchronicity to speak through numbers. So there's definitely that. Astrid, what do you think about twin flames slash soulmates? Do you think that we all have a divine counterpart? Okay, just, you know, being open and honest. I mean, I do, but it's because I found mine. Right? Just to be honest of the consciousness and trying to... uh, approach this from all angles I do because I found mine like I found mine in high school like we've been together since I was 14 you know um so yeah I feel like she's my other half she completes me and um and I think that you have that one person but um it's because I'm married to mine and we have a great relationship but who's to say like if something happened you know my view would probably change to fit my narrative you know, I had I interviewed a guy on here one time. He said that he uh, he believes that you have many soulmates, you know, and and I was like, nah, I don't think so. And it's just because he's been divorced and he's got another soulmate. So, right. So he has to uh, change the narrative <laughs> and I, I can be honest and know my narrative. And but, yeah, I, I believe in in that. Um, but then again, I believe that people making it work, you know, and and creating that and finding somebody who is good at what you suck at and uh, complete each other. Maybe there's more. I don't know. But for me, I, I found my other half and the one that uh, completes me. And we, uh, we we do really good together. Been with her since I was 14 years old. So <laughs> Heartline says twin flame stuff is a nightmare. I hope you never experience it. Of course, a quicker way of ascension painful yeah there's a even with that a lot of like we may be speaking about different things let's say that you know because um you know because people have all types of other things with it and you know some people you know there's all kind of stuff out there and i'm not really well studied in some of the modalities and some of the laws that go along with it right um gavin says explain the link between astral travel and smiling that's how i see astral travel i was taught by our aboriginal shami shaman here in oz i don't know those links between smiling um love and learn says derek you did really good i didn't throw off throw you off your game you straight stayed right on light love and light okay i know what you're saying when you wrap those maze overlays vendetta King bars are loco. I know who that is. Maze overlays and vendetta kings. I've tried to reach out to those guys and work with them. They didn't want to do nothing. It was years ago. Um, Zuru Hollow. Uh, do you think it's fine for believers to acknowledge the devon slash devil slash fallen angels' existence? We understand that God has no equivalent. There is only one power and no other. Yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah, to, I think acknowledging their existence is okay. Um, but I, uh, but the the end of what you said, I, I agree with that too. That there is no, and they're not enemies of God. They're enemies for us, right? There are enemies. They were cre- they're created beings that do. Um, they're like robots. Some of them, you know, not all of them. There's many levels. I don't want to say that and just be across the board that all demons or all fallen angels are robots, right? Um, NPC in video games, non-playable characters, you know, um, they have, they, there's an order, there's an order, 
they do things they're created to do. They get, you know, again, it's like the, the insects and, and, and animals and you drop, you know, if a, a dead animals on side the ro- <clears throat> side the road. There's going to be some creatures that come out there that you don't really get to see <clears throat> unless there's a dead carcass. Right. You're going to see maggots. You're going to see ants come out. You're going to see vultures and, and buzzards come and, and devour and clean the earth. They're, they're there to clean. There's a process there. They are birds and we can identify them, but they come and they, they're the cleanup men. And I think spiritually we have those cleanup men as well. Clean up beings that if you do wickedness, they, 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 you know, get dispatched and come to do stuff and repay evil for evil. And um, so it's a whole pecking, pecking order in, in the spirit world. Angels, demons, spirits, the sovereignty of God. There's diff- so many. And the words angels and demons are just messengers. And there's so many different types. Astrid says, I can't change the world, but I can change the world in me. So I rejoice. You two lyrics for sure. Let's see. Synthesize dream animations. Let's read. All right, somebody switch it up. Switch it up. Let's get some curveballs. Something different. Something you haven't heard anyone speak on or me speak on. Uh, learn. <laughs> love, learn, grow says, I think he looks like Jesus. Dead sexy. Shout out, uh, flying penguins. You're not so bad yourself, brother. Uh, also, what is the Holy Spirit? I really don't know is what uh, Zuru Halo. I've been asked this before and I've, I've went into a good bit of detail. Um, it's, I believe, I mean, it's the life force, the life essence. It's the breath. The word Ruach means breath. It animates all life. It is not a respecter of persons. It's the energy of, of God in the earth to uh, to go out and do a thing. Um, it's known by many names in different cultures. Um, then we can interact with it. It's a teacher. It's a helper. It's a, some people will get mad that I'm saying it's a it. A lot of people refer to Holy Spirit as a person and they call him Holy Spirit. The word Holy Spirit, it means set apart. The word Holy just means set apart. That's not his name. First name is not Holy. Second, last name is not Spirit. So to say, to call him Holy Spirit, it's kind of weird. This is some weird charismatic church to say, you know, Holy Spirit told me and he referred to it as a person. But that's cool if that's how it shows up to you. And uh, But it's a life force. It's an essence, man. It's a set apart spirit. It's something different. It's something peculiar. Uh, it is alive. It is teaching. It is. It does communicate. Right. Um, it's a little bit of all of that and more. Let's see. Uh, I pledge it next. I pledge it for for the next next week for the next week. Hundred dollars. Thank you. Convicted by God's providence. Um, Janelle, going back to Calvin Witcher. Yes, love Calvin. Jeremy Witcher is powerful also. Yeah, I wanted to get Jeremy on here. I wanted to get Jeremy Witcher on here too because I've had Calvin and I told him to set it up. And he was like, Jeremy was like, how he's just always behind uh, kind of doing the uh, the admin stuff and Calvin is in the forefront. So I'd love to have Jeremy on here too. Gavin says, deadly dreads, man. Oh, wow. Here's a good question. Desiree says, do you ever experience gang stalking slash witchcraft Freemasonry type stuff? Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, Spiritually, I have for sure. Spiritually, I don't think that any people were a part. Of, well, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. There was a guy who was over it. A guy had a spell on his belongings and, uh, but I did it, you know what I'm saying? And I stole something from him and some spirits were summoned to come and, and torment me and uh, get his belongings back. It was a warlock. And uh, so I kind of brought that on myself. But there was a person behind that that really led me down a really bad path of getting um, sick and things like that and going going mad. It changed, it changed me, you know. So... There was that aspect of witchcraft and um, dealing with darkness. So I've experienced that. Um, stalkers. Yeah. Yeah, we have stalkers. Um, 
I don't like them. I try to shut them down, try to, we've had to go to the police. Um, police were called and, and went out to visit an individual um, who was just making noise on the internet, really, but it really hurt my wife, you know, uh, that we were dealing with. And there was a couple, man. I've had a lot of, you know, um, I say a lot. I've had a couple of friends and their spouses get my number out of their phone and text me and uh, profess their undying love to me and uh, say that we're supposed to be together and all of that kind of weird stuff. And, and, and they go above and beyond where I have to block numbers and send screenshots and tell on them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I don't play that. But uh, that happens, and that's a, that's stalking for sure. Um, and it's not fun. It's not fun for me or my wife. And she doesn't, it's, you know. But, yeah. Shelly says, my church is nature. I have been rewarded with nature and its wildlife for sure. Baba says, I heard Stephen Greer works for the Clintons. Could. <clears throat> Let's see. Go through these comments. Mm, the World Guardian uh, Christian says, uh, does alien abductions occur in dreams instead of real life? I think so. I, I, I'm i not a proponent, and maybe this is some Stephen Greer stuff. I've talked to Carrie Cassidy and Stephen Greer, and they were both on both sides of this. I'm not a proponent of the evil alien agenda. At least not how it's been popularized in Hollywood. If the evil alien agenda is real, they're not in flying around in spaceships. They're here on the earth, um, running our government. Is this what I believe? Um, but yeah, so a lot of people have, um, demonic encounters, encounters with beings from an other realms. Maybe they look like alien greys. Maybe they look like feeble little, uh, beings with no emotion, you know, and uh, and they wake up and there's a being on top of them or in their room. And so they immediately say it's a, an alien um, abduction. You know, there's uh, other times where, you know, you know, they're on uh, they feel like they're on a ship and there's a little alien gray there. I'm really into uh, the my lab stuff of, of, of the mi military induced abductions to, to put fear and hysteria in this this realm so that when you. Uh, if you do get contacted by um, extraterrestrials or angelic type beings that you will not try to make contact with them. Um, so there's that too. A lot of people having demonic encounters and just saying that it's aliens. Because when you say the word Jesus, it stops. There's a lot of people that say, I'm on a ship, I'm being held down. But when I said Jesus, I was automatically in the room. So you said the word Jesus and you your body left the ship. And you went back to your bed when you said Jesus. Now I can see if it was a spiritual struggle and something like that. You said the word name of Jesus and it, it helped you. That's another thing. It automatically brings you back to safety. It's a safe word, right? Safe word. You're doing things that I don't like. And you say that safe word and you just pull yourself out of it. So there's that. Um, but an interesting thing about the alien abduction phenomena too is looking into um, uh, birth trauma birth trauma so a lot there's some weird stuff there about when you were born and the traumatic experience of being pulled from your mother's womb and looking into the big eyes of the doctor with the mask and with the utensils and things like that and the trauma that it has in a person's life so a lot of people were talking about how it's like psychologically you are reliving that traumatic experience from the little some people even call the grays doctors right the little grays are performing surgery on you and you're having flashbacks to this place where you know the memory is a little bit fuzzy but there's still these weird memories there of these people in your face and and pulling you and cutting you and doing sticking needles in you you know and the the birth trauma so that's an interesting thing to look into when it comes to the whole alien abduction phenomena birth trauma Astrid says I love Lala Rallis got that album in middle school it didn't leave my CD player for a month straight for sure 
reading through these comments. Are you originally from Alabama? No, I'm originally from New Orleans, right outside of New Orleans. But I'm in Alabama now, so. Has anyone seen the meme of the flat earth earthers listening to Around the World by Daft Punk? Mm -mm. Oh, that's a good song, though. Read through some of these comments. I'm, I'm probably way behind, too. I'm sorry if I am. You should interview Cullen Smith. Hmm. I know who he is. He um he stole some of my friend's work and tried to claim that it was his and he made it up. Um my good friend, an elderly lady, um who I interviewed and did a song with. So Gavin, keep up the work. Derek, man, that's why I'm here for sure, brother. Let's see what I came to witness. Thoughts on Bitcoin and crypto. Um curveball things <laughs> thank you man yeah i don't have a lot of thought on it i know um i had some money come through um bitcoin and uh i couldn't get it out <laughs> it took me like i had to i figured it out because i had money there and i had to try to figure out how i can spend it and so getting that money converted to paypal you know sent to my paypal account was a journey and it can be done so a lot of people ask me to put up my, my I guess, my um, a Bitcoin wallet because they want to donate, but they want to donate Bitcoin. And I guess I'm missing out because I've had a lot of people who are really big into Bitcoin hit me up and, and tell me to do so. But um haven't done that yet. But yeah, it's interesting for sure. For sure. I'm not an expert, but I have some experience with it. Not mining or anything like that. Mining Bitcoin and this is, you know, uh, you know, al alternative forms of currency, you know, gold and silver, Shelly says. Let's see, still reading through these comments. I'd like to learn more about channeling and entity possessions or partnerships. Yeah, um, I talked to a lot of channelers on here. I got a documentary on it. I put together one. I think I did a really good job on it. For some reason, it's hard to find it. YouTube's not going to help you. Google's not going to help you. I'm trying to, but it's called Persona. So type in Truth Seeker, Persona, and it may come up. There's some some things, but you have to look it up. Um, I did. I think I did a really good job on it, and I uh, attacked it from many different levels, channeling and and what it is of the of the different levels of the psyche and um. You know, I, I channel, I channel a, a, an old, um, old uh, <laughs> a preacher named Brother Wayne. And so I have a character that I do. But when I get into that character, it's uh, there's a freedom to say things that I can't say. Right. Because Brother Wayne can say it. And there's more freedom when you don't see my face. And a lot of people love that character. I love the character. It's hard to stay in character now. It's I do that. But um, for some reason, it's hard to stay in it. But I wonder if. There's a that you can get these uh, latex masks that make you look like an old person, and I kind of, I kind of want to do it, um, just to have that that face to go with it, the persona. But there's a lot of that. It's like okay, there's people channeling, you know, Michael Jackson and Hitler, and ask him why he did it. I mean, any of us can do it. Just kind of like respond like Hitler would respond, and then if you want to jerk around or close your eyes or roll your eyes in the back of your head or change your voice. You know, the whole changing the voice things helps. Um, Bashar does it. But I went into a lot of detail on just different theories of the mask and the scapegoat and things like that in um, that persona documentary that I put out. So make sure y'all check that out if you haven't, because I put a lot of time and energy in that. It doesn't have a lot of views either. <clears throat> Uh, Marshall says, hi, thanks for all you do and being real. Hey, that's all I can do. Be real. Thanks for all you do, too. It is possible to converse without clapping back. I'm glad for the realness of your root in conversation. For sure, man. Thank you. I, lo I like the way you just let people speak and don't interrupt, interject, or argue with them. I think get, uh, getting someone else's perspective opens your crown. For sure. You know, I, I, I learned that from... Um, Two two main things that come in my way I interview people or just have conversations with them. Um, two things come in mind is the person that I used to be, 
because I used to be combative. I used to look for things that we don't agree with. Now I'm doing interviews with people and I'm looking for what we can agree with. And, and sometimes they're spitting stuff and I'm not interested. Oh, finally. Okay, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. So, and I can give my opinion and my knowledge and what I agree with. And let's build there. Can two walk together unless they agree? The scripture says, let's find what we can agree on and let's walk together. No, 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 no. We need to find what we don't agree on and talk about that. You need to get out of my face with that. So it's that aspect of me used to be combative and looking for the things I disagree on. That plays a big role in how I interview people now. And then the second part of that is George Norrie. Just listening to a lot of coast to coast and really liking the way that he would just let the people talk, <clears throat> even if he didn't believe them. You know, even if it sounded far out, there's people who call in and say, hey, I'm looking at the moon, man, and the moon's moving, man. The moon is moving up and down. It's moving around, you know, and he's like, oh, tell me more. What's it? Where are you standing? What city? You know, and he's instead of like, hey, man, don't don't play on the phone. Stop calling in, playing. He'll just pick their brain and just see who he's talking to. And in doing that, they've got to the bottom of some really interesting situations and, and phone calls and experiences. And so I've kind of took that and applied it to the way I do it. So, yep. <clears throat> Let's see. Going through some more comments. Um, layers of pseudoscience is not the same as layers of faith, Gavin says. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm coughing in the mic or clearing my throat, but I've been talking for, man, two hours here. Look, I, I wasn't going to go live. My guest stood me up somehow, time zones probably. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to work on some other stuff. But look, two hours and I know there's a bunch of, there's still a bunch of questions and stuff in the chat. We got we got a lot of people hanging out. I didn't even look at the numbers today. Sometimes I look at the numbers and I could see them going up and down and it kind of messes with me. It's like, man, this is good information. Why 17 people listening? But there's a lot of people in chat listening. So shout out to all you guys for hanging out. Must be touching. Hey, I told you this is your show. Like you what do you want me to talk about? Some more curveballs. Let's do it. And I know I'm behind. I hate that I am, but I'm trying to go a little bit faster. Um Chris Garner says, so, so of the really, some of the really far out stuff needs a reality check. Yeah, man. Again, you know, I call it, man. I, if I'm a skeptic, you know, but it's not this, but, it, but I don't call it with a matter of fact. I say, Hey, I don't, I want to know why you believe it. That, and I, I really am like, I really want to know. And it's interesting to me. Oh, you went to that kind of church. Okay. What'd they tell y'all? They told y'all that. And then the dude came dressed up like the devil in the way he did what? You know, I'm like, I'm interested cults. I'm interested in cults and how they operate and how we can be so vulnerable and how they welcome us in and look at cults that I've been in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've been involved in some cults, man, wanting to belong. And, you know, then the leader's trying to have sex with everybody, you know, and that's what usually what happens in these cults. So be careful when the leader's trying to, have sex with everybody. You know you're in a cult. Um, there's a bunch of them out there. Be careful. Protect your neck. Flying Penguin says, what are your thoughts on the end times Jesus coming versus happy end times where Jesus has already come and the future is positive instead of mass destruction? Yeah, man. You know, I, I think about that a lot. And um, um. Where, what do I think? What are my thoughts? Just kind of without getting too deep. Um, definitely preterist. Um, maybe full preterist. What does that mean? I don't honestly know. I think that a lot of that stuff has already happened symbolically. A, a lot of it is symbolic as well, right? Looking over our lives and even the book of Revelation being a review, <clears throat> an overview of things that were mentioned in Daniel and kind of painting, a, a, you know, Babylon will versus a Babylon that will be destroyed. So I was a part of a cult, a group of Hebrew Israelites in time group that believed that America was going to be destroyed because America is Babylon. And we can show you, you know, New York and it had like one of the main streets in New York is Babylon Street. And I mean, just so many things like if you're looking for the, the, the things that link it together, you'll find them. And there's so much stuff for us to say, OK, America is Babylon and America is going to be destroyed. Thank you for the donation, Astrid. Um, 
So I was a part of that. And uh, and you start you you find what you're looking for, and we found it everywhere, you know. So much so that it would freak you out, you know. And um and I've been a part of that. But, you know, Babylon being destroyed, thinking America is going to be destroyed. America's not in the Bible, man. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I'm not sorry because that that would suck, right? <laughs> you know. And and I was following groups of people who thought taught that the wormwood and and these stars that are going to fall from heaven were bombs were nuclear bombs that were going to be dropped on america and only the righteous would be saved and then i was part of groups who took it literally and we had to leave america we had to flee come out of her my people so that you will not partake of her sins and it tying it in with scripture and and it saying it's for us and had us all freaked out you know concentration camps and fema camps and fema coffins it's a whole movement it's a lot of money in it too that's the conspiracy stuff i'm talking about that's not the truth the truth is more of this stuff has already happened uh, babylon was already destroyed in an hour in revelation it says that in an hour it would be destroyed read the book of daniel and you'll see that in an hour the great pompous uh lofty king had all the money, all the renown, within an hour was crawling on all fours, eating grass like a camel, like a donkey, you know, and he, it, it, within an hour, his empire fell, fell. It's given us an overview throughout the scripture. But if we don't know the scriptures, then we don't know. So you you just believe what they tell you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a I'm a preterist, man. I think a lot of that stuff already happened, if not all of it. You know, the, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Come on, man. When Jesus came back, the dead in Christ rose. They rose. They went to the, uh, it said that they went to their family relative's house. Oh, that was loud. That scared me a little bit. They went to their, their family uh, <laughs> relative's house and uh, and preached. Thank you for becoming a sponsor at Heartline. They went to the family's house and preached the gospel. The dead in Christ came back and said, oh, that ain't it. That's not a, even, you know, I, I had some preterist on. I'm like, dude, it makes perfect sense. Like, come on, how are you partial but you don't believe that? Well, yeah, that's talking about something different. They came back, dude, the dead rose from the grave like zombies when Jesus came back and went and preached and declared the gospel to people and what Jesus did. So, yeah, I think that happened, man. And so much of that, you know, so much. And Jesus says in Matthew 24 that um, that this generation, he's talking to a group of people. He says, look, surely this generation shall not pass away until all of these things be fulfilled. Come on, bro. What's that mean? It means that you guys will not die. There's kids standing there talking to the little ones. And it happened 70 years after the Apostle Paul, the destruction of Jerusalem. That was their apocalypse. That was the end of their world. Christians were hunted for game all of that stuff, the mark of the beast, it was all, it's happened. Oh, brother, but it's going to happen again. Come on, why you want to be that? Because people want to be the people of the book. I f feel it. I mean, I remember when I was in church, like I want, I knew that Jesus was coming back any day. Come back any day is going to part the sky. And, I, and part of me still hopes that, you know, there is something that he comes and makes it right. He has to, right? Because these people here are wicked. You know what I'm saying? So I do believe in some type of scenario uh, with the, the people who are running the world now and, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and for justice to be to for them to have their day, definitely when they cross the other side, they're going to have their day. The most high is going to judge them. But that's why they don't want to give up their rule and their reign, because this is their kingdom. They're trying to find out ways to live forever. They're playing God because when they die. God is like, oh, got you now. Got you now. Time to give up your kingdom. They, they're not going to the two kingdoms cannot coexist for Christ to come back and set up his kingdom on the earth as the new Jerusalem. Um, the kingdom of this world must fall. And then we, we just kind of goes back to what I believe and everything we've been talking about, you know, with the politics. So Baba says, have you heard that Eric Dubai is David Wilcock? I have not. Let me search Eric Dubai on Google. Oh, God. Come on, dude. Is he reincarnated? It's very weird. Stay away from me with these <laughs> theories. Adam says, wow, still alive. Yes, sir. We're still alive. We're going strong. Two hours and 10 minutes in. A lot of people hanging out. Ask your questions. 
I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I feel like I'm going to get to the bottom of the chat and the questions will stop and then the podcast will end, but they're still coming. They're still coming. Cat Doherty says, I had dreads for 18 years. Cut them uh, seven years ago. I still miss them, though. Thought that it would change for the better. Can't necessarily say that. Mm. Let's just read through here. Michael says, is there anything wrong with Christmas studying the mysticism of Kabbalah? I don't think so. I used to. There was about eight or nine years where we quit doing uh, Christmas, and I withheld that from my family. And I uh, quit doing Christmas and Easter and all those things because they were pagan. They were demonic. And I taught, I, taught, I taught others not to do it as well. A lot of my friends quit doing it and withheld it from their families as well because of me. You know, for me teaching them, showing them the evil. Now I'm like, let, let's look at the good in it. It's crazy. I talk about the wake of your mistakes. Now I, I came to a terms and had this a spiritual awakening and, and got to a point where I could do Christmas and get a Christmas tree and celebrate that. And, and my friends, they were still like, bro, what are you doing? I said, oh, man, I just I had an awakening, bro. I just it's OK. And they they have to explain to their family. Yeah. Sucks. Part of it. That's why we got to be careful with our words. Everybody will give it a account with all the words that they speak out. Every idle word. Let's see. Reading some more. Yeah, I'd be weary of anyone who says I am the only one. Astrid says, I know you're talking about the uh, the light language stuff. I'm so behind on the chat, y'all. I, this is stuff I talked about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm just I wonder if I should go to the bottom because there's so much. You guys are awesome. Oh, and we're still talking about twin flames and all this stuff. Yeah, uh, Spirit Wolf is my uh, my twin flame. I'm just going to try to go fast, okay? We're going to do this fast. Just go speed round, okay? Going, going, reading these comments. Brother Wayne speaks the truth. He does. <clears throat> he does. Let's see. Have you ever heard or experienced deliverance happening through using psilocybin mushrooms? Mm, not deliverance, um, but in a sense because you get to, you're delivered from a a lot of different strongholds. So yeah, not in the terms of Christian deliverance, come out in Jesus name, any of that kind of stuff. But the fact that depression was defeated, that hope was restored. You know what I'm saying? That type of deliverance through psilocybin mushrooms. That's my story and store in the story for, for a lot more people. So I'd say yes. And, you know, those those demonic strongholds, which are thoughts in your mind that are that go against the will of God for you. So if that's a deliverance from those type of entities and those type of thoughts. Yes. One hundred percent. Breezy says uh, your views about seeing energy and flashes of light in the air. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. So if you're talking about stargazing, that's that's one thing. A um, couple things. There's one like it could, they could be trying to get your attention while you're stargazing. Definitely had that. Um, Ed Grimsley talks about these wars that are being fought in outer space. Um, we have Space Force now and uh, that you can see them. He, he claims that you could see them shooting at one another, these ships and out of the Earth's atmosphere. And he says that a lot of times those those lights that you see just that poof, just one time and it's gone. He says a lot of times those lights are the ships blowing up. Star Wars type stuff. I believe in it. We just now heard about space, space force and uh, it's a thing now. But you think that's brand new? You think that they just like that week they got it? They had a no. This has been going on for probably thousands of years. Probably. Thousands of years. And it just they just give us a little bit of it, you know, a little bit of technology here and there, a little bit of inkling, you know, to of what's going on. But that's something they've been doing for sure. Um, Astrid says, my first experience of Christ was through mushrooms, Stacy Flowers. I haven't had them since I truly became a Christian, but it was so euphoric and lasted for two weeks after the trip. Nice. It changes you, man. 
It'll make you look at the stuff you've been suppressing, doing the inner work. Danny says the Holy Spirit is just the active agency. Pradamata or pr pranayama, I think. Yeah. 72 angels. Wow. Going back to some of these, trying to go, trying to go fast. Uh, Gavin says, what's your favorite above and beyond track lately, Derek Bruzzi? Uh, we all know there is only one track that the heavens will command. But what other than above and beyond you like? Yeah, above and beyond is a couple, you know. Um, Good for me is the uh, is the psilocybin song by uh, Above and Beyond for sure. I would love to work with uh, Zoe Johannesson um, from that song who works with Above and Beyond. I'd love to have her on a song. It would be amazing. Um, but there's a couple of them. There's Alchemy. There's Love is Enough. Uh, Love is Not Enough. Um, You've Got to Go. Those are my go-to songs for them, for Above and Beyond. Very magical too. But without that, I'll say this. Um, I do have, if you, if you go to, um, if you're on Spotify, you could probably follow me. I do have a playlist on Spotify that a lot of spiritual, I have spiritual hip hop playlists that I've put together with a lot of songs over the years that a lot of people don't even know about um, that has really helped me and inspired me. So there's a lot of Lost Children of Babylon. There's some Killer Priest. There's um, Illuminati Congo. Uh, there's some beast on there, beast 1333. There's, uh, conspirituality, some of those guys. So if you want to see what that is, I might do a whole video on that. Just going through like, Hey, spiritual hip hop music right here. And then that's just hip hop. And that's not even talking about Trevor Hall, Nako, Enigma, you know, uh, just other beautiful spiritual songs, chanting and stuff like that. I mean, those are probably all videos by themselves that I should do. So. Love Learn Girl says, what stock do you recommend us buying so I can make more money? I don't know. I've never done that. You know, I don't really. There's definitely money in it, but I think it's a gamble. So I don't really know. Top of top says, church people getting healed to brag kind of look fake. The pastor jumped out of kind of dumps. Most of them I fell seeing a lot of places. Is it real? Yeah, I think uh, I think they've learned to to play in the energy. I think they've learned to play in the spirit of expectation. That's a big one. You expect something to happen, and when you get up here, it's um, it happens. So your faith, God responds to faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I think that a lot of people are, uh, their, their level of faith and expectation is raised pretty high. And so they get what they're looking for, and it takes the pastor touching them or the Benny Hinn blowing on them, whatever it is. So there's definitely some placebo that happens there. Astrid, did you ever collect pogs? No, I remember playing with them, but I didn't really collect them. Uh, he said he wanted a curveball. <laughs> Astrid, I used to have them on occasions in ceremony, have communion with God. Okay, you're talking about the... Uh, through, some, though, through some ceremonies, I've witnessed deliverance happen. I mean... Some, I mean, I know people who got freaked out. They ate too much and they were in a bad place. They were, they didn't focus on set and setting. And they kind of had their way with them. And they were screaming and crying and begging Jesus for help and casting out demons out of themselves. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that could be a form of deliverance or a bad trip. Asking God to deliver them from a bad trip. Set and setting is key. Christy Folks or Christy Johnson. Set and setting. My friend, she did them for the first time after being a part of the group, and she did them by herself. And she said she went to went to the dollar store, <laughs> tripping on psilocybin mushrooms. Went to the dollar store because she didn't think they were kicking in. That's probably not. That's probably one of the last places you want to be is at the dollar store on mushrooms. Gothic Mystic says to me, the Holy Spirit is female. She always appears to me as female or as my mother for sure. Going through some of these fast again. Danny says gang stalking is real. I've been a victim of that. Vic victim from that. Um, talking about the Holy Spirit uh, being a Kabbalistic idea of Shekinah. The Shekinah glory. Yeah. Or Shekinah, so as some would say. Let me just go fast through these. 
We live in a world of magis and sorcery. For sure, Adam. For sure, for sure. Demons can create illusions. Arguably, they are illusions because they work with fear and all that transcends the matrix, so to speak, is love. However, I've been possessed, so I know it is real. Yep. Um, Cameron says, do you listen to Dan Moeller any? Um, very little. When I was driving, I, I listened to a, good, a, a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I, like, I like him. He's, um, he loves, he loves, I love that. You say he comes to our church once a year. I think that some, okay, Heartline says, I think that some demon Nephilim is after me. I've had multiple male friends tell me they're real uncomfortable in my presence, and that they have vi violent sexual thoughts that are not normal for them around me that they have violent sexual thoughts. Oh my God. It must be pretty comfortable to tell you that. That's crazy. Be careful. It's not good. <laughs> Astrid, uh, intrusive thoughts can be demonic. Yep. Cash app has native crypt crypto, Richie says. Going through. Man, y'all's comments are just too much. Trying to get to some good ones because I can't read every single one like I'm trying to do. Just reading. For those of you listening on the podcasting apps, work with me. Ethan says, I truly enjoyed listening. It was very helpful for me personally. Amen. It was awesome. I enjoyed talking and hanging out with you guys. Let me let me clear my throat. That's a good song. She posted lyrics behind that, Shelly, or music tunes. Yeah, thank you guys for the super chats and becoming members and becoming patrons. It's really, really cool because it's kind of been like, maybe stagnant for a while. And then I come on here and just get like five, six, seven different people joining and donating and stuff. Thank y'all. Uh, I had a memory. I had a memory come back right before Christmas. I straight up had a telepathic conversation. He decloaked himself to witness then he walked down the road where I told him he could hide out oh wow that's wild I believe it hey it could happen you remember that the commercial hey it could happen let's see hey it could happen was it like a McDonald's commercial or something 1994 there's another one from 1993 if kids like me were running the world, I'd finally have my own room. And no one but my friends would be allowed to come in, because I'd have a special lock put on my door. I'll have a super advanced chemistry set that I'll use to fix the ozone layer and to cure that thing that happens to your head when you eat ice cream too fast. And when I'm having a Big Mac attack, I'll just go downstairs, because I'm having a Mickey D's built on the back of our house. Then me and my friends could act totally goofy whenever we want. Jonathan Edward Moore, pipe down or you'll be sent to your room. Excellent. <laughs> hey, it could happen. Hey, it could happen. Tangent. Oh, look, y'all seen that email. Don't don't look at it. Where am I at? I don't even see myself anymore. There I am. Maybe. Yeah, it could happen, man. I really believe it. I sent Jehovah's. I sent Jehovah's your number for a Bible study, okay? Hmm? Jehovah's Witness? Yeah. Don't tell them to come over here. They want to do... They want to do research on me looking at all my tattoos and stuff <clears throat> my my voice is kind of starting to go it's been two and a half hours so I'm almost just kind of read through here <clears throat> Cameron says speaking of preterists what do you think Paul meant in Timothy uh, speaking against a couple guys that were teaching the resurrection of the dead already happened do you think he was talking about 70 AD um I'm not sure, man. Um, not really sure. I know Peter went into more detail about that. Um, but 70 AD, like that was that was after, you know what I'm saying? So 70 AD happened after um, after that. The Bible is an old diary and symbolic book of inner healing and the struggle we all face. And the Bible has so much more to it. Adam says, I believe it, brother. 
Took the words right out of my mouth. <clears throat> totally agree. I've been in the end times cults as well. Um, Flying Penguin says, but I've moved to preterism the last few years and probably full preterist now. I love the term happy eschatology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Daniel in the lion's den. Let's see. Okay, so you're right. So, okay. So, um, Gothic Mystic says, in my opinion, true seeker, you're a partial preterist. Full preterists believe everything has been fulfilled. There will not be a literal second coming of Jesus. You know, maybe that's a hope. You know, maybe that's a hope that that something's going to happen. You know, because I don't see, I don't see, uh, and that, that's the only thing that's the end. Like, why do you think that'd be the end? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like once it's over, it's just done. Nothing else is going to happen. We did it all. We just, now we're just wandering, you know, left in the wake of the mistakes of all of this stuff. Love David Wilcox. Didn't know he died. That's what uh, Janelle says. Going through these comments. Ba ba ba. What do you think of angel activation? 72 angels. Um, I don't know nothing particularly about the 72 angels. I know that's I'm sure that's Kabbalistic, but, um, you know, I, 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 with my so-called, you know, stargazing and, and I call it UFO, I just cause terminology, I don't really, there's not a lot of UFO stuff. They're, they're angels to me. We would call them angels. They're messengers of the most high seraphim, cherubim, Malachim, Raphaim, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I've had a lot of encounters and been, you know, communicating and stuff like that over the years. So, it's the same conversation. So, I mean, I have a little bit of, of knowledge. Um, there's a, um, there's angel, uh, invocations that I've put throughout my music and things as well that are hidden. Um, and then one of the album co in the album art for the song that I did. So I did an album, um, it's called that they may know him and it's a Christian rap album, but towards the end of that, I was really getting into some more esoteric philosophy and, looking into some far out stuff, the age of Aquarius and learning about the Piscean age and all that kind of stuff. So, um, there was a invocation to the angel Gabriel that I hid in the artwork and it's backward though. You have to like read it in a mirror. Um, but that's, and it's kind of blended. So it's still hard to even know what it is, but I remember it's a Christian rap album, but the last song, there's a song called matrix of power, which comes from Jordan Maxwell. Uh, and then there was a song called uh, The Age of Aquarius. So those were like the two songs that was like me introducing me into like deeper realms of thought when it comes to the music. But the artwork was the last thing I did. So there is some esoteric mysticism stuff in the artwork of that album. So there was an angelic uh, invocation in there. Does anyone know about the MD and VA who does that UFO contact group? I'm not sure. Jeremy says, yo, bro. What up, Jeremy? How you doing, man? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so before there was written word, we learned from pictures. Philip Deere, a traditional Muscogee Creek, a healer, spiritual leader, civil human rights. I, I'm Muscogee Creek. That's the uh, tribe I'm from. This right here, you see my tattoo. If those of you watching, it's backward and upside down, so good luck. But it says Porch Creek Indians. So I'm a from the band of Porch Creek Indians on my mother's side. Gavin says, have you considered making a deck of affirmation cards, man? Yeah, not affirmation cards, but uh, I do want to have my own destiny cards or tarot cards, if you will, but they won't be tarot, right? I have this deck here, the tarot of the most high. I'm going to have this guy on here. Uh, I reached out to him um, and uh, Joshua got the mystic. Are these the ones that you got? Did you get these? Cause he sent me a link and show and said that they were still available. Um, these cards, but the, the guy who made these are going to be on here, but I want to make some similar to these. I really like these. So I do want to have my own, my own deck. Um, MC Yogi heaven is here feeding feature. My Yeah. That's a good, great song, brother. Yep. Ethan says, I'm still listening. Well, you said uh, added quite a bit of clarity to my own inner mystery for sure. Breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. Danny says, biggest question, is God in everybody even though they don't bear fruit or acknowledge the Holy Spirit? 
in my honest opinion, I would say yes and no. <clears throat> yes, because we live and move and have our being in him. <clears throat> I think so, bro. I think that, um, you know, the book of John says that Jesus is the light that lighteth every man, that he's the light of the world and he lights every man who comes into the world, uh, that there is a literal fire. There is a light inside of each and every individual. Um, so Hindu philosophy teaches that there's a literal flame, a spark inside of you that your could be your soul. And um, um, it's ignited. You know, it can become a, that flame can become a fire. That spark can ignite. And sometimes it takes breath to breathe upon it. There's breathing techniques to get that fire bigger. And then we look at Jesus with the sacred uh, heart, with the heart, with the little flame of fire in it, the sacred heart of Christ. And so there's a there's a lot of uh, interesting concepts when it comes to that fire. But that that fire is lit by Jesus, the Bible says, and it's enlights every man that cometh into the world. Now, are some of these so-called humans not men? Are they not real people? They just look like us. The guys in government, some of the, the people who do all this wickedness on the earth. Are they not really real people? Are they um psychopaths psychopathy they don't have a distinction they don't they're, they're okay with killing thousands of people they're okay with with murder you know what i'm saying are they real people or is just something wrong so you know that's a another you know wrench in the machine too are they not like us you know keep reading here i once heard someone call it basic intuition basic instructions before leaving earth the Bible. Yeah, I mean, that's kill a priest. He has a song. It's good. It's called Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Yeah. And then there's a uh, old Christian song too. basic instructions before leaving. earth. I think it was like uh, Salvador or something. But yeah, uh, a couple different play on words and for sure. Getting through the track chat again. She said, yes, it's Kabbalah, 72 angels. Yep. It's the same angel. It's yes, it is the same as angel invocations. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not an expert on it, you know, but I do, um, you know, have a little bit that I've just kind of been revealed to me and my personal stuff. I keep going through some of these. Got to opt out. This has been nice. Thanks, Truth. Thanks, Cameron. You said Cree. It's Creek. Porch Creek Indian. Uh, Ethan. I'm still reading the comments. My experiences with channeling, some spirits are just testing your fear and want to see if you can overcome that fear. Yep. David Icke, reptilian race. Yeah, that's what I've kind of, I guess, reptilian race or the serpent seed. The Bible would say that there is a seed that is the serpent seed, right? And that 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 seed would fight against the seed of the woman. So it's like the true humans against the reptilians. I mean, the serpent is a reptile, right? So, you know, if that's literal or that's symbolic, you know, but it's definitely this fight that's been taking place throughout eternity and throughout our existence on Earth. Um, in the revelations, you know, we, you know, that we're fighting a snake at the beginning, the snake, the serpent. And then at the end, we're fighting a dragon. The snake gets turned into a dragon at the end of the book, you know. So. Ethan says, that's what I've been studying as of lately. Psychopathy, silently meditating on the subject. Yeah, man. Wow. Uh, Shelly says, true seeker, do you have the P.O. box? Yeah, it's in the description of the uh, of the video here. At the very bottom, there's my, my P.O. boxes there. Oh, man. So let me. Yeah, so I just got this in the mail, right? This is Motivite. I want to show you this other thing I got, too. Um. Now this was this was strange. This was synchronicity. Oh man. Hold on, I'm gonna show y'all who are watching. <clears throat> oh, try to hide it off camera. So my friend, um, longtime listener, uh, Adriana Ortiz, I guess she was following um my my Instagram or maybe Facebook, I don't know. But I, I did this, uh, we were in this shop in Denver and they had a bunch of statues. There was a lot of really cool ones. There's a bunch of like Egyptian statues and stuff. And there was a couple Christian ones that were really cool. 
but I had never seen this particular statue before. And um, so I, f I put it on Instagram and I was like, so y'all all, you know about this, this one, but which, the one I really want is this baby, baby Jesus one. And so I've never seen this statue, but she seen my Instagram and she bought it for me and my family. Look at it. It's baby Jesus as a doctor. And he, I think he's known as, um, what do they call it? Uh, uh, Ninos Dios, the, the child doctor or the child God. Jesus is the great physician, but it's him as a baby on a chair with his little bag. The, the great healer, the child doctor. Very interesting. Thank you uh, for this gift. She sent this to me. Um, and I guess it goes under the Christmas tree. And uh, we uh, it definitely is going to embody my um, my trip to Denver. I'm not going to be able to look at this and not remember the beautiful experience that I had in Denver. And, uh, and, and uh, it was just so cool that you seen that. You caught it. You picked it up and you bought us one. Uh, thanks so much for that. We get a lot of cool gifts. I, I'm, a, I'm surrounded by uh, gifts in, in this room that people have sent me. Uh, some of them are really creative, really cool. Uh, my friend Cindy sent me a, a mug with my picture on it. And when you put uh, hot water in it or coffee, it uh, reveals my picture of me at a concert. She also made this this big poster that I have up here um, with a couple pictures of me. And then she's got some of my lyrics on it. And it's a big poster with my lyrics on it. Man, I don't want to leave anything out. Uh, sh Brett sent us a juicer the other day. <laughs> Brett sent us a juicer. Brett sends, sent me... Um, some uh, uh, anointing oil from Israel. He sent me a map of the Holy Land that's like popped out. I mean, we just got so much stuff that people send, and it's so cool. Uh, we got a really cool community, and uh, yeah, the PO box is there if anybody wants to send anything. Um, I get a, I got a lot of books that uh, the guests send me. The guests will send me their books, and there's no way I could read them all, you know, but uh, I have them, so that's cool. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I guess it's a good time to go ahead and end this show and um, hope y'all had fun and I, I enjoyed it. And uh, yeah. Well, how long is this? Two hours and 37 minutes by myself talking, tried to cut out the dead air. And um, but I'm not by myself. You guys are, are with me. Times like these, I need to open the phone lines, right? Let you guys talk a little bit. Let me rest my voice. <clears throat> but I enjoyed it. And I'm sure the my guest that sent me an email here, you probably forgot about her, still wants to go. Uh, dealing with um, time zone issues or can mess you up. But the calendar that I use, it it translates the time. It'll tell you, like, your time. So um, some of the things that I mentioned, I want you guys to check out. Definitely go check out um, the Prasanna uh, documentary that, that I made. Um, just type in Truth Seeker persona it's on youtube um check that out i put a lot of work into it a lot of information check out the persona thing uh the guided meditations and stuff it's the, the new thing and I, i'm not really trying to promote this through what i'm doing like this is kind of to reach another audience but christian-meditations.com christian-meditations.com it's going to be like a monthly thing where you get new meditations every month and and, and they'll, they'll most likely be on my patreon as well but if you want to check that out there's some new ones up there that i have up and i'm probably going to upload them to youtube and things like that but it's something that i'm trying to promote and been working hard on trying to figure all that stuff out outside of the true seeker universe so christian-meditations.com Check it out if you want to. If not, it's cool. I love you either way. Thank you guys for all the support, all the love. You guys are awesome. Peace, peace. And we'll do it again Thursday. God bless. That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.